Buenísimo. We are live. We are live. Uh, I'm going to check whether it's live on Twitter. Um, yes, it is live on Twitter. <laughs> Can you Fantastic. We funny, did it. We funny. did it, Reddit. We did it. We did it. Did it. And uh, funny because, uh, because it's not live on YouTube, which is supposed to be more reliable. Uh, but anyway, anyway, thank you, Elon, uh, for uh, making this one work. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, how are you doing, RFG? I'm all right. A little tired, but I'm all right. Um, we'll get into it. Before that, I just want to do a quick uh, introduction, and then we'll have a nice discussion. <laughs> sure thing. Awesome. Um, my my audio coming uh, coming in good. Yeah, I can hear you fine. Awesome. All right. Uh, from this, right? From the mic. Correct. Awesome. So I am going to go ahead and start with an introduction. All right. Uh, hey, hey, uh, GM, GM, everyone. Uh, welcome to a live stream on uh, Salman Needs a Job. Uh, I'm doing a live stream after a very, very uh, long time, actually, about 10 months or so, uh, but for good reason, uh, because this week uh, is Nouns Hack Week, uh, and I have been uh, brainstorming ideas for what I should be working on. Uh, part of that uh, is a research about PO apps uh, from the Nouns community. Uh, which led me straight to the Noun Square uh, Discord server and to Rob, Robert Fishgirl.eth, who, uh, might I say, has the most nounish wallet of all. Uh, what do I mean by that? Uh, well, uh, Robert uh, Fishgirl, uh, who also goes by RFG on the Noun, noun Square uh, Twitter spaces, has an amazing collection of poor apps uh, from the Nouns ecosystem. Uh, her collection uh, on uh, robotfishgirl.eth starts, uh, uh, starts first uh, with a poap from uh, June 2022 uh, that says uh, you have met Patricio. And since then, it looks like RFG has been present in every uh, announced community event and has a poap to prove it. Uh, poaps, if you aren't aware, uh, is short for proof of attendance pro protocol, uh, which is essentially um, a way for uh, preserving memories on the blockchain. Now, RFG is a core uh, team member at uh, the Noun Square, uh, which is a media and a community hub uh, for Nouns DAO. Uh, it is a media project I very much admire and I want to learn uh, more about. Uh, she is also a Nounsil member, uh, which is a special uh, council of uh, Nounish builders. And uh, like I said, uh, she has a collection of poets uh, that speaks volumes of her involvement in the Nouns community. Uh, she is the guest on today's show, and uh, I could not be more excited. Uh, the plan today uh, is to learn about Nouns uh, to looking at uh, some of the activities in the Nouns ecosystem. And we're going to do that uh, through a little bit of an interview uh, with IFG and then uh, go through uh, some of her PO apps in her collection. Uh, before we begin, uh, if you are new to the channel, uh, I'm Salman. I explore the world of work uh, in Web3 on this little project uh, called Salman Needs a Job. Uh, feel free uh, to take a look around and subscribe if you like. Uh, all right, uh, let's get into it then. Uh, how are you, IFG? I'm OK. <laughs> Uh, did you like that introduction? <laughs> yeah, it was perfect. You did your homework. Uh, <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm I'm on the Noun Square, uh, usually hosting or co-hosting with Toadie on the Noun Square. Um, been a Nouncil member for a few months now. Uh, and this is actually, you, you don't realize how extraordinarily well-timed this is. Is it? Because... Uh, today, at, at time for, for anybody listening to this not on the recording, at time of recording, it is March 31st. I started working full time in Web3 on April 1st of last year. It is April. My, so I this know, was as a, as this was the last. In so India. exactly 365 days ago was the last day of my like day job working in like IT and stuff. And uh, yeah, so very well timed. <laughs> Whoa! What a. I I mean, yeah, very special then. Uh, I didn't, so I did not realize this until this morning <laughs> where, yeah. where like Facebook memories and stuff was like, oh yeah, this is when I quit my old job. Um, How so yeah, that. and I've basically yeah. been working in nouns that entire time. I, I jumped around project to project for a, a month or two, but I've been in nouns um, that entire time. And I like first started getting paid for nounish stuff like, two months after I started working in it. So, yeah. 
Got it. I'm just hitting. Uh, a, I'm just tagging you in a tweet. Uh, because we are live on Twitter. I'm just gonna. I just wanna do oh, yeah. that. Yeah, live with uh, Robert Fishgill from the Noun Square. <laughs> Let me do that. Uh, and breaking this news of uh, one year. Uh, in Web three. <laughs> <laughs> just breaking the news of one year of employment in Web three. <laughs> <laughs> employment is a strong term it hasn't been consistent but uh, one year one year of being of of uh having a sustainable income in web3 very specific <laughs> one year of being unemployed but <laughs> being able to be unemployed and still pay rent that's that's the bar where we're, we're at right now the question i want to ask you is are you un unemployed or, or are you unemployable I have to explain uh, because I'm part of it. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm unemployed. I'm very much not unemployable. Um, I uh, so for years I'm I'm 28. Um, and immediately after school, uh, I immediately went into IT. I actually majored in music, hmm. and then but uh, so I, I majored in unemployment. Um, but <laughs> I uh, I was a I was a jazz voice major, and then I. I after school, I immediately jumped into just doing like on-site IT in Manhattan. Um, so, so that's and then I did that for five years before switching over to doing a community management job for a Web three metaverse company that sadly isn't around anymore. Mm -hmm. um, after about two months, uh, that ended, and then I could have gone back to my old IT job. I like, I'm still friends with everybody there. We, we hang out, we play games all the time. Like there, that's like my social group is still at that company. Um, but so when, when I, when I told them, you know, Oh, the, you know, I'm not at this job anymore. They're like, Oh, does that mean you're going to come back to this tech shop? And I was like, uh, maybe <laughs> let me try something. So I withdrew my 401k early from that old job. So that gave me sort of like a parachute for about three months and used that three months to try to get established in nouns. And then the noun square was already happening at that point because the noun square started June 13th. I started really heavily contributing to the noun square and now we're here. For context, um, this this particular event of uh, what you did with your 401k, when was that specifically? That, that was in... So I started working at this metaverse company in April, and oh, yeah, then that ended about two and a half months later. So mid June, actually immediately before NFT NYC last year so in June. I should have guessed because uh, your first app is from June first. Mm -hmm. So it it is, but it isn't. Um, I mean, on this one, here's something that you need to know about the way PO apps work. Okay. Uh, PO apps are dated based on the date that their issuance begins. Hmm. So in the case of Patricio, yeah. Patricio is the founder of Poap. He goes around the world and is in like a different country every month. And so one really cool thing that he does is he does a monthly Poap of just like, hey, you met me. Hmm. And it's every month. So you can see that it is for June 1st. It actually, technically it is, my like third or fourth po app hmm. because the first noun square po app and then the first few of that happened before I met Patricio, but because I met him during that same month, it shows up first. Got it, got so it. It's not got technically it. first, but it shows up first in my wallet. And if it's on chain, that's good enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> got it, got it. So the date of issuance, uh, but your uh, first po apps are from the noun uh, uh, community then. Uh, we'll get yeah. into that. Uh, but it's so cool. Congratulations on uh, one year of being in Web3. How awesome. Uh, what brought you into Web3, by the way, the first Metaverse gig? It was it, it was a combination of things. So I'm actually one of my best friends in real life was working for that company. And she was like, hey, we need a social media manager. You, you We have very similar working styles. Do you want to apply for that job? And then she sent me application info. And I was like, you know what? Sure. Why not? It, it's a pay raise from the company I'm at now. I wasn't super happy with the way things were going at my old company. Um, for me personally, it was there was a few like other major things going on in that time in my life. So I was like, you know what? We're in a state of change. So yeah. let's uh, let's see what happens. And 
yeah, that's that. So I just applied and I ended up getting the job and was doing social media and community management. So I was technically doing marketing, but my primary job was basically managing the Discord server, which so, if you've ever been in a Discord server full of DGENs, you know, is a little bit more than a full-time job. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it, it was actually a job that brought you to Web3? Is that it, yeah, I, it was actually a full-time salaried position. Mm -hmm. And then when that stopped being a thing, then I went, you know what? I've done free, because I've done freelance work before. I did freelance IT work in college to pay mm -hmm. for college, um, as well as doing freelance uh, voice acting. Okay. So mm -hmm. I've done freelance work before. I'm familiar with it. I'm I'm used to having to manage the balance because for anybody who works from home, you you know how hard it is to make it so that you're not you don't end up living at work. <laughs> um, I know. So yeah. that's so I, I I was used to managing that balance, and I went, yeah, you, get, you know what, I'm gonna try this. <laughs> okay. Okay. Do continue. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so that that was it. So I started salaried, and then I switched to basically doing freelance, and now I'm. I mean, we get paid every two weeks at the Noun Square, and it is my full-time job. Um, actually, really? more than that. I work on it about 60 hours a week, but it's it's worth it. It's fun. <laughs> we'll get into the Noun Square. Uh, what what got into the Nouns? Um, what, like, when you were in your Metaverse job, I'm guessing that you learned, you found out about Nouns, and then you wanted to get involved in what you just said. Like, how did that happen? Why? It was... So, I actually... I was somewhat familiar with Web3 and NFTs before then. Um, mm. I I wasn't really embedded in the culture. I was familiar with how the technology worked because I was doing on-site IT work, which meant that I've had to work on you know mining rigs and stuff. I've had to help like bugs bug fix and stuff like that. Um, the physical presence of them, but. Mm. Uh, I wasn't super plugged into it. And so my friend was like, okay, if you're going to do a community management job, I've done community management for like games before, okay. but never for web three, but there was a certain amount of overlap between, you know, it's a metaverse platform. Mm. And then he so that, that it was a game essentially I've done that before. So there was a fair amount of overlap of knowledge and skills. Oh. All I needed was more web three knowledge. And so the first thing I did was I made this Twitter account, the Robot Fish Girl Twitter account, which just hit its one year anniversary a few days ago. Um, and I Magic just lap. basically, I went to, I, I asked my friend what her Twitter was. I got that. Um, she actually moved out of the space <laughs> and is, that Twitter account no longer exists. But I got, I went to her Twitter account and I was like, okay, you are following people that you respect in this space, right? And she went, yeah. And I went, okay, cool. So I went to her follower list and I copied the whole damn thing. Okay. And I was like, I need a profile picture, but I don't own any NFTs. And she went, okay, well, you can check out nouns. They, they have CC0. You can just make one. <laughs> okay. So I made one. And you can actually see in my POAP collection, we'll get to that, um, the first POAP that I issued for NFT NYC last year was using that noun that I also, I edited it. Um, okay. But, oh, well, yeah. we can get into that later. But um, yeah, so I, I made a playground noun, and that was my PFP for a months until uh, eventually uh, Haps, the the guy behind um, Board Noun Gang, made me the uh, the the blue background robot fish, the robot puffer fish that I've used since. So that's been my that's like my forever PFP now is because I got an honorary Board Noun Gang out of just because. I entered the nouns discord and just showed up and started helping people um, get acclimated. And I, I think the, the skill that I brought to that was in a large part determined or uh, sorry, a large part dependent on the fact that I wasn't really deep in the culture yet because hmm. I've very recently had to go from a relative novice understanding the technology. I'm, you know, I'm technically minded, I understand mining. I understand how the blockchain functions. I get all of that. So I get it enough that it wasn't hard for me to get the culture, but I've had to, I've still had to go through that transitory period and I know where I got stuck, hmm. which means that now looking back, I can go, okay, this is what normies are going to be thinking about this. So how are we going to adjust to that? So, so that's why my focus with TNS has been on, you know, bridging that gap for people who maybe aren't super into NFTs, but could be into what Nouns is doing. 
Mm. Nouns is the reason I stayed in Web3 after that job wasn't a thing, because I really believed in this ethos of you can build this whole project where the purpose is funding people to do things that are valuable, not just for the project, but also things that are valuable for the world. Hmm. That's fantastic in so many ways. So you got that like early on itself, when you uh, got into the nouns community, you started to um, understand, understand what uh, nouns represented and you were like, you start uh, yeah. and you started contributing. I also have an eidetic memory. So like, I'm very, like I was super familiar with nouns.center and I knew how to find whenever frequently people came in back when the official nouns discord existed, it got shut down on Halloween, but back when it existed, it's still there in an archive. So you can actually see my contributions if you just search my name. Okay. But um, I basically took on an unofficial community manager role there as soon as my official community manager role ended where anytime I was, I was on the discord all the time anyway, as I am now. So anytime somebody had a question, I was usually there and I could answer them pretty quickly. Or if it was a long form question, I'd be like, okay, DM me. And I've onboarded a couple hundred people to nouns through just having those one-on-one -on -one conversations. Um, and that's basically what I was doing there. And I did it enough that there was, a retro round of a uh, hundred ETH or no, it was more than that. I think it was like a thousand ETH. Anyway, big what? chunk of change. There was a big chunk of change that was <laughs> given. I think it was a hundred. Okay. It huh. was, it was, it was prop 37 or 47. I forget which I'll have to look that up, but uh, it was basically a retro round that was spearheaded by uh, Maddie and Joel to, fund to retro fund people who had done nounish things and the way that it worked was anybody couldn't be nominated you could either nominate someone else or nominate yourself hmm. and at once at the there was like a month-long nomination period and at the end of that month-long nomination period there was like 140 people got nominated and then we just did the biggest coordinate i have ever been part of <laughs> I see. To allocate this giant chunk of ETH. And I ended up getting, I think, like 1.2 ETH from that, which at the time, at the price of ETH, was enough to pay my rent for another month and a half. Amazing. That's and that was the first payout I got from Nouns. And I wasn't, I didn't nominate myself. I didn't know this was happening until the day that I got a notification saying, like, hey, you know, I got it tagged in the Discord saying like, hey, you've been nominated. Fill out your coordinate stuff. And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so this was after how many how how many months of contribution? This um, it, how weeks? many months of 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 so I, I was I was constantly in the nuns Discord when I was working on the other project. Um, because we were working on stuff with nouns there. Okay. So I was sort of contributing then, but That's in terms of like active contribution, that was about a month and a half in ish. So, um, and it was a one-off, but it wasn't a sustained thing, but it was still cool to be like, Oh wow, this is, this is a, a sizable cool, cool. And also like really deserving because when it's a retro round and it is voted in by people nominated by somebody else, uh, it, it it really it speaks right. about like how I, you you totally deserve it and that's why you got it. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool. Well, there I do have, and and again, the, you can go back in the old nouns Discord and you can read my thoughts on the matter. Um, and Honk actually presented a counterpoint that made me feel better about it. But I actually was like, hey, if you look at the list of all of us, because there was a full list of who got the most. Hmm. Um. And it like toward the top of the list was the people you would expect, you know, Toadie, Ben Body, Joel. Okay. Uh, up Toshi, Noun142, you know, basically the Noun Square. <laughs> um, and then, you know, the the some devs were kind of further down the list. You know, the, the devs that everybody knows, like CDT, were were fairly high up there. But I felt when I got that, I felt that like, okay, yes, I have done enough work to deserve this kind of payout. I don't think I've done enough work to deserve this percentage of the available payout. Hmm. 
compared to some of the other people on this list. Like I was, I was in like the top third. I was in like the top 30 ish. Okay. Which okay. felt odd to me. And I, it's when I realized that one of the things that you run into when you do retro rounds is if you do a retro round where you have a giant lump sum of everybody, hmm. the people who are going to get the giant, the biggest portion of the ETH are going to be the people who are the most visible. And mm. in case it isn't abundantly clear from the everything about me, I am professionally obnoxious, mm. which means <laughs> that I will always be the most visible. So I'm in a weird spot of I benefit directly mm. from that inconsistency. Uh, but at the same time, you know, it does bother me a little bit. Honk's counterpoint was, yeah, these rounds always directly benefit people like you, but also the devs can just dev something and they'll be fine. Whereas you can't necessarily do that. So it does balance out in the grand scheme of things, but that is one thing that I would like to is, bring up. Is there a, yeah. Is there a solution to the, have, have now the nouns come up with a, a solution? Well, to the so that was a one-off round. So there wasn't, that was just idle musing after the fact, but at the noun square, we've been, we're constantly iterating. The cool thing about doing a daily show, we're at 291 days, by the way. The cool thing about doing a daily show is uh, that we can iterate continuously. Got it. Um, so one of the things that we're doing is adjusting how we do retro rounds, whereas for a while we've been doing, you know, these huge retro funding rounds um, where like everybody posts everything that they've done for the last two weeks. Now we're trying to adjust that and being like, okay, we're going to split this up into categories. So depending on what you've done and what category, we're going to allocate a certain amount. We're, we're still, I don't know how much I can reveal. We're still like workshopping that, but we are, that's a problem that we are working on fixing. I don't know about the rest mm. of the NANS ecosystem because again, decentralized, you know, it's, mm. it's very much not a monolith, but it is something that at least the NANS square we are working on. Interesting, interesting. So has categorizing, I, I would imagine, has improved the visibility of um, of some of the contributors and their contributions? I It's definitely, so we, we haven't implemented it hmm. in a mechanical way yet, but we started implementing like, you know, split your contributions into these categories. And then we as knights, we're the ones who do the allocations. Um, we can get into what that means, but... Uh, <laughs> As knights, we're the ones who do the allocation, so it's helped us, I think. It's certainly helped me uh, do more accurate allocations for everybody. Got it. Uh, this is very relevant. Uh, I don't know how this uh, discussion came up because I was literally... Your mic cut out for me for a second. Thank you. It's, it's, I'm getting some static. I'm seeing a lot of static. I can sort of hear you, but you're fairly distant. You might have to unplug the mic and plug it back in. All right, the static's gone. How about right now? Oh, perfect. Is it is it better than it was before? Yes, it's it's perfect. I'm just wondering, was I talking on the wrong earphone? Was I not talking on the mic? You might have been. I don't know. It's it sounds great now. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, for the uh, memory. <laughs> <laughs> Technology. <laughs> All right. Gotta anyway. love it. We but, laugh but, so we don't cry. <laughs> but I was audible earlier, right? You were well you, you sounded perfectly clear. I could hear you fine. You are clearer now, but you, you were fine. It was perfectly acceptable. But I would have said I, something otherwise. But I'm gonna I'm gonna continue the conversation with this uh, pain uh, that the last the last <laughs> twenty <laughs> minutes was from a different audio source, another one I wanted. Anyway, so what I was saying is that uh, this discussion uh, it's I don't know how it came up, but. Uh, is highly relevant to me because I was just part of a retro round on uh, a project called Dow Drops. I'll just quickly do a screen share and sh uh, show it to you. Dow Drops, uh, 
and we got the results just literally yesterday and the allocations were exactly like how you described on on nouns so this is dow drops it is by the uh, by dorg and the ethereum foundation and uh, right. dorg curate a list of uh, contributors based on their contributions uh, to uh, the ethereum community and the voting is by the ethereum community based on like a vetted uh, wallet activity uh, very highly vetted because this is their first iteration of uh, the uh the retro uh, uh retro public goods funding initiative uh and now the results are in and this is what it looks like so every the wallets are allocated points uh, voting points based on you know certain activity like poaps is one of them poaps at ecosystem events is one of them uh smart contracts are deployments and dao activity and then they um uh vote uh, in here in in this wonderful platform called dao drops and uh, people earn and it is a, a grand pool of $250,000 this is me uh, it is not bad like i i've got like $1400 in that fantastic yeah <laughs> it, it is uh, pretty cool uh, and uh, yeah but exactly what you described i totally um, I, I totally resonate because yes uh, people people the projects and people that are more visible people know about are the ones that are going to get the votes because the ones like the ones are not who are not who people are not familiar with unless somebody takes the effort to read all the 50 all 50 applications and make an assess and try to make an assessment of the weight of their contributions which is impossible uh yeah this is the kind of results that you'll see is it it, it it nothing nothing wrong with that uh, totally appreciate uh, uh the the funding that i like the retroactive public goods funding initiative uh, but yeah i just wanted to shed light on that Yeah, I actually I just pulled up the um let me uh, l- uh, now I'll share. Uh If you want to sc- share the screen at uh, at any point you can. <clears throat> yeah, I'm going to I'm going to show you this. This was the 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 round that I was talking about. It's coordinate round. Okay. This oh, yeah. ridiculous coordinate <laughs> round. Um okay. so let me see if so there's me. So you can see where who gave what. Hmm. Um and but but yeah and then so the way coordinate works for anybody who's unfamiliar the size of the uh the ring around the PFP or around the uh the the initials in some cases is uh the amount of eth received. Hmm. So like nodes sizable chunk god I miss nodes. Um, hmm. So Nate Mills got a, a good chunk, Sam 142. So and you you can actually you can also see um how much give you got from who. Got so these it. are all the people who uh, <laughs> I got the biggest chunk from Poap which I find interesting. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing and um, uh no surprise. <laughs> well, this was before we met. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh the today's conversation is uh, uh yeah, it's quite special I'll tell you uh, for uh, for reasons like this. Yeah, um, Cotip is very interesting um and I think it's a wonderful way to uh, reward people. Uh, has its flaws uh, and uh, we are discovering uh, in Backlist DAO uh, many flaws uh, more recently. Uh, but mm-hmm. uh, but it is it is a wonderful uh, uh yeah way to we use a similar system for tns we're actually working on uh adding a coordinate like feature to prop house i see so it's still in development we tried it a few times there were too many bugs so now we just do allocations uh, manually uh, toady does them with like google sheets but uh cuz that way we we know that it's working but we're working on doing um you can actually see it on prop.house there's a a nowny wearing a little like suit <laughs> okay so uh yeah that's 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 something that's being worked on uh, sort of passively we've got other projects that are taking precedence but yeah Awesome, got it. We'll continue the conversation. Uh, just a quick note to anybody watching: I might be a little sweaty because I've turned off the fan to avoid the sound on the <laughs> uh, on this uh, video. So please bear with me on that. Uh, but it's a good conversation. Uh, so uh, I want to before we get into the poor apps, uh, just like 
just a little more conversation around the ecosystem. Uh, so I would love to deep dive on the noun square, which I really admire, but I think it's going to take a little uh, time. But can you just <laughs> like uh, you give me an overview of how the noun square operates? Uh, like I see, I think I, I discovered the noun square a, a while ago. Uh, I listen occasionally. I am on the Discord and I know how crazy the operation is. Like, the down square have so many events going on i think not only every day but multiple uh twitter spaces a day yeah. really hi high production um uh, videos on youtube and like just to operationally just to organize something like that the inflow of guests and the curation of whatever the delivery of po apps the design of these po apps and then producing these into uh, videos and repurposing them everywhere Insane. How did yep. that happen? Can you take me through a little um, bit of the background of that? Honestly, we ask ourselves that like daily. Uh, so yes, the Noun Square, we, our goal is to be uh, the, well, at least a media hub of NounsDAO. Uh, the beauty of a decentralized organization is that there's, you, you can't monopolize it. Um, and so I, I actually, there was there was some conversation about this during our last prop where some people were concerned that we kind of control media around nouns. And it's mm -hmm. like, if that's a concern, then just make some yourself. Like, I don't, <laughs> it's CC0. You could, we'll help. <laughs> like, but, um, and we, and we're actually, uh, or I'm, I'm working on a video series to go up on our TNS Twitter uh, to help other people host their own spaces, even if they're not on the noun square. Um, just because we mm. want to see more of this, but um, so that's that's some free alpha. I'm not playing the sound because I play it from my computer, but pretend it's. I'll send you the file. You can put it in in post. The alpha. <laughs> um, anyway, a, a note on uh, that. A no, just a note on what you just mentioned. I don't know if anything like this exists, but what would be awesome is to have kind of a framework for what the noun square does for any new like media DAO that wants to start like i think everybody twitter spaces we have that. okay okay supposing yeah, i wanted we, to start we... something like this for a different industry uh and i do actually <laughs> so yeah. how yeah yeah it, it would be amazing to replicate you want the, the noun square starter pack <laughs> so that's what i'm talking what about what we do um it's the way now so it, it's it's important to to look at the way it started uh because if you want to start at the point that we are at now Good luck. I have no idea <laughs> how you'd do that. The way it started was 4156 uh, posted a tweet about, hey, wouldn't it be cool if Noun O'Clock was like this massive internet event? And a bunch of stuff was I've... built around the auction cadence of Noun O'Clock. And Toadie and 142 went, all right, bet. And they got together a group of people to make... Uh, Noun o'clock, and it started with just being called Noun o'clock. That's where the the clock, um, Nouny clock, our, our mascot came from. I see. Um, and then eventually we turned into Noun o'clock at the Noun Square, and this was actually before I was part of the team. So I am in a somewhat unique position of being so far the only core team member who started as an audience member. Everybody else on the core team is basically a co-founder they were there technically the co-founders are 142 and toady but everybody else was there like from day one they were in the discord they figured it all out they planned the shows stuff like that mm -hmm. um i'm the only one who started as an audience member and just showed up so much that eventually they started the squires program i was the first one there and then um just a couple months ago i got knighted and inducted into the core team so i'm, I, I, I'm sort of in a unique place there but i I have to say how honored I am to actually chat with you right now because <laughs> I swear because because I have wanted to get a deep dive on the noun square because I I I have a project that is like that is that revolves around the kind of things that the noun square does in terms of media formats and things like that. So right. it's not that I'm gonna start it tomorrow or anything, but I, I have this curiosity of how how this works. Yes, and, and to, to to be able to like 
so organically our conversation was actually supposed to be about poets and we'll get to that but so organically be gifted this uh, con- <laughs> this insight this insight about the noun square through a co- through like the first contributor uh, and co team member at co- uh, the noun square is uh, is what I, i'll say an honor well i'm i'm glad i'm i've <laughs> i i tend to want to 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 help people do stuff on their own i i blame my education minor but <laughs> Um, and also because that's sort of like the core ethos of nouns, right? Is that everything, obviously not everything in the nouns ecosystem is necessarily CC0, but the lion's share of it is. And that's one of the things that I love about it. Because even before I joined nouns, I used to do a lot of, you know, look, like like the, the soundboard that we use at TNS is a perfect example. Um, we have the soundboard for the, the, mo- the most part was made by uh, Woody. Okay. Um, but we've got those acapella sounds um, that we use the the oh, yeah. um, that like, like the the alpha noise and stuff. I made those. Those are me. Okay. <laughs> um, so that that's like, and and but I was I've been doing stuff like that for years, where I just make cool stuff, and then put it out there, and I'm like, hey, it's you know. I, and I was really, I didn't know CC0 existed. I was releasing it under Creative Commons, but then adding a note on the site where I up site where I, wherever I was uploading it, being like, hey, this is under Creative Commons, but just assume that you have the rights to play with it. I don't know. So everything I made has always been public domain because I'm a big believer that I'm a I'm actually a big believer in copyright, which is why I'm a big believer in CC0. I think that there are a lot of things, a, a lot of IPs that should be. Uh, that that the creators should have control over them. But at the same time, I believe that there should be resources out there for anyone. I want people to make things. I want people to be able to make whatever they want. And my goal on, on the noun square and in nouns in general, and generally speaking, is to remove as many barriers as I can to making things. That's why I love nouns.center because the ethos of like, hey, you want to start a nouns project? Here is a giant list of all of the nouns traits in SVG and PSD and PNG format. You have all of the fonts that are used. You, here's a list of all the fonts. Here's a full color palette in whatever system you, there's everything. Um, and I'm a big believer in in adding to that. In, in you know, Joshua Fisher, I know, is working on a CC0 repository with a few other people. Um, and I, I really want that to be a thing that makes it so that the only barrier between, say, for instance, you want to start, start set up a, uh, a a media network for a different project. And we are we're actually kind of doing that with the noun square. We're trying to branch out beyond just nouns. But you want to set up a media project, a la the noun square. My goal, and we're definitely not there yet, but and probably never will be, but eventually my goal is to make it so that anybody who wants to do something like that, the only barrier between them and achieving that will be time and effort. I don't want there to be a barrier of, well, I want to make this, but I don't know how to draw. Well, like, mm. okay, yes, you could go learn how to draw assets. You could go learn how to make logos, but that takes so much time and honestly not everybody has that kind of brain so i want there to be things that you can just be like okay uh, i want this 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 and this and then just make it um i want that i'm i'm currently in the process of writing and editing or recording and editing i wrote it already a, a video series on how to host twitter spaces because that's something that i do every single day multiple times a day on the noun square we, we host 35 shows a week on average usually more um, and so wow. I, I'm doing a full guide. I'm like, okay, Twitter's a weird platform. This is how you schedule the space. This is how you do the marketing before the space happens so that you can get an audience at the beginning. Uh, mm. some tips, Val- like Val- make sure you start the space a few minutes, you start the actual space itself a few minutes before you're going to start talking to give people time to see it and share it and just mm. have some music that you play while people are entering the room. Um, here's how you reset the room, where you take a pause and you go, hey, this is why we're here, this is what we're doing. Um, retweet the room, stuff like that. A full guide on how to start the space, host it, end it, and do post-production. 
where you take the recording, you download it from Twitter, you uh, make a YouTube video about it, everything like that. I'm doing a full toolkit because I want to make it so that anybody who, maybe you're not a natural at hosting. You know, I'm, mm. I've am i never had to really, and this is going to sound conceited, but it's actually meant in a self-deprecating way. I've never had to work at hosting. This is okay. just something that I do. I'm good at it naturally. I've never had to try. And what I want is to make it so that everybody can get to the level that I can get to without, with, with, with a minimal amount of effort and the minimal amount of time. I want to, like me being naturally good at hosting and naturally good at talking to people, I want to make it so that as somebody, like the most introverted introvert can, if they want to, and if pressed, get up on a stage at an event or go up on a Twitter space and be like, hey, this is the show that I had an idea to make and I'm making it and not have to worry about like, oh, well, what do I do? You know, I'm, I'm creating full guides on how to lay out a show. You know, if you've been to multiple noun o'clocks, you know that we sort of follow the same format every time. Hmm. Um, and there's a lot that goes into that. So deep dive on the noun square. I can sum it up in like maybe five minutes. Uh, just just a second before that, just because it's so relevant, uh, what you described is so relevant to me. So I just want to bring <laughs> it up. Uh, and it's so amazing that you're doing this, actually, that that what you're creating, I think it, it would be as invaluable to someone like me, uh, who is clueless. I, I have the skill that you speak about, about hosting to the space and everything, because I've done that yeah. uh, many times. Uh, but I have a project okay, that I have actually the last explorers uh, uh, explorer grants round i have submitted so i'm just going to show you a section of that it's called who needs a job so my project is salman needs a job who needs a job is an extension of that so previously how this pro my project started is i used to talk to all kinds of people all kinds of profession in order for me to identify what i need to be doing in my life and i have sort of arrived at that That's which awesome. is now which is now I'm into Web3, I'm into DAOs, and even my content is like exclusively about that. While at the same time, what I used to do before, I still feel passionately about that, but I don't feel like it is my role uh, to do that anymore, which is this project called Who Needs a Job, um, which which here, like I'm just going to like a couple of ideas that I mentioned. And one of them is literally a, like uh, Twitter Spaces is at the center of I've read of this it. proposal. You did? <laughs> yeah, I read this when you posted it. No way. Awesome. So Twitter Spaces is at the center of it. And this particular thing you mentioned about it being a utility uh, for people to level up as a host. I totally agree with you. And it is one of the things I write as as well, uh, which is so like, which is such a coincidence. And you're working on it. How amazing is that? Um, I, I think I think hosting a live conversation today is a very valuable skill and there are platforms that allow you to do that. And people are generally who have not done it, which is most of the people have not hosted a live conversation on Twitter. They all <laughs> can do it. They all have the platform to do it. Twitter is open to everybody. And if there is a platform which is uh, allowing you to actually encouraging you to come, uh, which is supporting you to come, Host this conversation. You know, don't be afraid. We will guide you. We will allow you to. Yeah. Uh, that is such a that can be such a welcome uh, space and potentially build talent for this particular skill, which can be used in any industry, any type of uh, ecosystem, or whatever it is. So whatever what what you're working on, I would say is quite valuable. <laughs> the noun square space camp coming to YouTube whenever I finish it. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Yes, yes I'm calling it Space Camp. I'm not sorry. <laughs> I... <laughs> Great. <laughs> okay, so you 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 were about to tell me like the behind the scenes of um, about yeah. The so it yeah. started at, at just being a noun o'clock show, and then eventually it started expanding. I I got on because Toady started posting these videos of uh of like highlight reels of playing FOMO because it used to be we just Joined the space, we played FOMO, and then we talked about what had been going on that day, and then we ended. That was it. That was the whole show. The early shows were rough. Um, and then uh, then we started getting, I say we, I wasn't part of the project yet, but I'm going to keep saying we. Um, we. We started getting guests on, and then and, until it, we, we reached, when I brought was brought on was 
Tony was posting these videos and I was like, I can probably make those better and in less time. Can I just do it? And he was like, sure, make something and send it to me. So I did. Hmm. I started editing videos of FOMO and uh, you can still see them up on the TNS YouTube if you go back far enough. Um, where I was doing like fun, like they were, they were YouTube poops. I was doing edits uh, over like little animations of nouns over, you know, what we were talking about and, you know, putting a bunch of memes in there. Uh, I was usually on stage every day, even then, uh, to the point where my laugh has become an iconic The Noun Square sound, which is weird. <laughs> but like to the point where they made me record my laugh and put it on the soundboard. <laughs> so, okay. Just so that if I ever, when I ever, when I can't make a show, they can still have my laugh as the TNS laugh track. That's so that's okay. the point I was at at that point. Um, so I was, you know, if I'm trying to be quiet or it's late or something, then I, I restrict the uh, ridiculous Joker laugh and I tend to just sort of wheeze. So I would put in, so yeah, if you go, <laughs> so if you look at the, the one that Tody edited were the ones with the, uh, the dark brown or the, the, the weird, like per blue purple thing. Okay, okay. If you go up a little bit, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So like the cat, the, the Muttley, that was me laughing. Um, those, those are the ones that I edited the, uh, the, the low fats that have the, uh, the noun thumbnail. Okay. okay. Not that one, but the, the other ones. Um, good. I got it. Yeah. This one. And, and so the low fat fever dream mega cut is a doozy because <laughs> that was two days worth of light shows. Um, and it's so this is this is how I got on the team is making these shit posts. Okay, okay. So you started um, contributing. You started contributing. I started contributing. And then, and, then, and after about a month of that, um, they wanted a way to reward me fiscally because I was doing it for free for a, a minute. Um, they wanted a way to reward me fiscally for it. I, I was at the time basically only being paid for stuff I was doing for food nouns, actually. I'm on the kitchen nouncil as well. <laughs> Uh, and and I manage the food nouns Discord. Yes, I'm everywhere. So uh, <laughs> I <laughs> yeah. There's a nouns media Illuminati. Um, <laughs> not literally, but kinda. The <laughs> um, yeah. and and so we. Uh, how how so, can I so join the Illuminati? <laughs> <laughs> there isn't really one, but like there's the we you tend you know you tend to see the same like group of people. We're all the people who just constantly like we're the people we're we're the we're we're, we're the nails that stick out who everywhere we go, we're just like, <laughs> yeah, I'll talk. I don't have any semblance of shame. And then we end up being the people that you hear from most often. Um yeah. and so frequently we'll like post something and then find out that like two other people that we work with on six different projects all posted the same thing. Okay. <laughs> where it's a high it, like the amount of, the number of times Toadie and I have said the same thing at the same time in meetings, we're a hive mind. It's terrifying. Okay. Um nouns isn't a cult. But <laughs> <laughs> um all right. for legal reasons. I no, believe I, you. Uh, <laughs> somebody has to. No, but I, I so so yeah, I started contributing that way. Then we I got in a retro round. They wanted a way to sort of formalize that. Um, that was when uh, Poopy Pie, who's a squire, he doesn't show up to spaces that often. Um, or if he does, it's under an anon account. He, he's mysterious, but he's the one who does all of our YouTube production, pretty much. Mm -hmm. uh, him and Woody do most of it. Uh, and and now we've actually got the old House of Downs team. They're doing stuff for us. Um, but then they introduced the squires. So they called the people on the core team the knights of the noun table. Okay. And then they figured, okay, they've got knights. Uh, we've got this sort of like medieval town square branding going on. And then they introduced the Squires program, where it started as people in the community who showed up often um, were brought in to just do, like we got an exclusive chat and we just started working on, you know, cool stuff. It's like, hey, is anybody available to like make this cool thing? And then we started the Soapbox program, which is the bulk of our shows. Uh, soapboxes are any nounish community, uh, and we're kind of full right now, so I feel weird advertising it like this, but any nounish community can come to the noun square and be like, hey, I want to do a weekly show or a bi-weekly show or whatever. Hmm. And we will host it on the noun square 
Uh, so they get the reach of the noun square. We will start the space for them. Um, we'll help uh, promote the show to some degree. And then that person or that community is the one that hosts the show. So there's some times where that like line blurs a little bit. Like I uh, help co-host the, the Nouns Museum show. Um, although I think Joshua Fisher is taking over co-host for that pretty soon. Uh, <clears throat> there's also like there's food noun shows. There's and it's a, we do 35 shows a week. Um, okay. it, there's the daily drop with that's gnarly. That's every single day. Um, so yeah, so we host the show in terms of we host it on our Twitter account, and then that community actually you know hosts the show, does the work that like Toadie or me or Cardinal or whoever does on uh, the live shows on nine o'clock. Um, and that's the bulk of our content comes from these shows, these soapboxes, where we we want to be a platform that any Nanosh community can be like, hey, I want to do this thing, and we'll help them do that thing. Um, and then once the soapboxes started, that's when things really kicked off. That was the pilot was over. Uh, we went back for a second round of funding. Um, that was on prop. I want to say 101 um, or something like that. It was, hmm. it was, it, it was either 101 or like 110. Uh, I can't remember which exactly was the first uh, funding round for, for nouns, for the noun square. Got it. Huh? This is going to bother me if I don't <laughs> look it up. Um, Cause our I, recent I, one was 226. One before that. I've seen the nine o'clock um, prop. Um, I've gone through it. There were three. Uh, but, so there okay. was 101 was the first one. Huh. 128 was after that. That was for one month. 128 was for a six-month extension. And then the most recent one, 226. Uh, so we got funded for six months. And uh, seven months later, we went back for additional funding. Mm -hmm. We got made it. it stretch an additional month. Um, and it was during that, but it was during that first one that we sort of uh, really nailed down the format where we have the, like, a, and yeah, I sent this to you where we've got the core team of the Knights, that's Toadie, at, at, at the moment, that's Toadie, Ben Body, Optoshi, Josh, uh, Woody, Zargs, 142, and myself. Uh, we're the core team. We functionally co-own the Noun Square. We do uh, the high-level strategy. We, you know, do the, the retro funding allocations. That's our responsibility. Um, mm. We are the people for whom this is our job, for the most part. Um uh, then there's the Squires. Squires started as just like elevated community members. Now they are full on team members. Um, and we have a lot of different sub teams that consist of uh, the Knights and Squires that we combined, we call them the Royal Fam. <laughs> okay. And we've got a bunch of sub teams. So like there's the booking team that are responsible. Their sole responsibility is getting guests on for nine o'clock. Uh, that's mostly like Symbiotech, Cardno, April. Um, they, they, they get guests on nine o'clock, which is how we get such awesome people to come on nine o'clock. I owe so much to them. There's the scheduling team, which is mostly Zargs and Santosh. They do so much work. So the guest getting... management, I, I just want to ask, like, how, how is it coordinated? What tools are used for guest manage, management? If, sub, if supposing I was a square and I wanted to suggest, hey, I, I'm, I'm about to book somebody for tomorrow. Like, how does that flow happen? So... There's, I personally don't know. Um, I know the, I know the basics, but that is fine, that is I don't fine. know the details. The booking no team handles all of that. But basically if somebody is like, Hey, I have a guest, then uh, like, if, if there's somebody that I want to interview, I can just be like, Hey, uh, when do we have available? The booking team will tell me hmm. or the scheduling team will tell me. And then I'll be like, Hey, do you want to come on? It's probably going to be around this time. This is the other fun thing. Nine hmm. o'clock moves. It drifts forward. It, when we started on June 13th, the show was at about 3 p.m. EST-ish. We have since gone all the way around the clock twice. Okay. So we went through midnight. We went all the way around. Then we went through midnight again, and now we're starting at around uh, 11, 15 a.m. EST. Why? Why, why is that? So because... the way that Noun O'Clock works, it's based on the Noun's auction cadence, right? So... Uh, Nouns auctions last 24 hours ish. Hmm. If somebody bids in the last five minutes, the auction timer gets reset 
to five minutes. So if somebody bids with one minute left, the auction gets extended by four minutes. Okay. Okay. If somebody bids with two minutes left, it's extended by three minutes, etc. And do okay. your own math. But uh, so there's that. Then there's FOMO nouns. Now for a while we've been getting botted on FOMO, but uh, a, a few days ago we counteracted the bot. We're actually the noun square. We we got the keys from the people who originally developed FOMO. And now we are working on an iteration of FOMO that will have civil protection. But because for months it wasn't an issue, but recently uh, somebody has been botting FOMO, didn't have civil protection. So the first noun was getting upvoted immediately and we didn't drift at all. That's why it's been stuck at the same time for like a month. Um, so so it's, now it's, it's, we, it's the, uh, it's, <clears throat> It's, it's random people who are, you know, boarding it. Like it's, <laughs> yeah, yeah, anybody, it didn't have any civil protection. I don't, cause it, nobody was like, and I understand why it didn't because FOMO nouns is designed to be a low, um, a low friction way to choose the next noun in a sense for anybody who doesn't know FOMO nouns.wtf is a site that we've used that started, uh, last year sometime. Yeah. So come back at nine o'clock. Um, and you can actually see, if you go back to that YouTube video I told you about, uh, you can see us playing it, where you upvote, or it, it, nouns are randomly generated based on the, uh, the block hash. Uh, but if you, so with FOMO nouns, what we can do is we can upvote or downvote the noun. And if we get enough upvotes, I think it's at least 50% of the clicks um, or 50% more than the noun votes. I, I don't know really how it works. But if we get enough upvotes, then FOMO nouns will attempt to settle the auction, um, which means that the if you look at the top right of this page, then you'll see there's, I think, like 0 0.2. Yeah, there's 0 0.2 ETH in the contract. Mm -hmm. So with enough upvotes, the FOMO contract settles. And uh, that noun, if we do it in time, is the one that gets minted. Uh, okay. Because it's okay. it, again, it's depend. This is what you're looking at right now. If the auction settled at this moment, we would get a snowman for the next noun. Hmm. That's how FOMO works. It's an oracle that shows us if the auction is settled right now, what will the noun look like? So it's randomly generated, and we're just trying to. We're like, if we see a randomly generated one that we like, we we'll just go, so yeah. <laughs> this one decides the nouns, nouns, doubt the main uh, noun. Yeah, yeah. Oh. It doesn't decide it. So. Like I said, these are randomly generated. Yeah. Nouns are randomly generated, but they are generated based on the block ID hmm. of the of the block that they are minted on. So what okay. FOMO nouns does is it shows us if the if the auction is settled right now. So the way nounish auctions work, and this happens in NARS, this happens in Poodowns, this happens in nouns, lils, whatever. Um, the auction ends. A winner is declared then you have to settle the auction. And what settling the auction does is you pay a giant lump sum of gas to do a series of things. One, you send that noun to the winner's wallet. Two, you send the winning bid from the auction contract into the treasury or wherever else it goes. Three, you mint the next noun. Or in the case of like nounder days on the nouns dial, you know, we do, uh, we skip zeros because those go to the nounders. Um, okay, yeah. In that case, then you meant both the nounder noun and the next noun. So FOMO nouns was introduced as a way to prevent people. It, it, basically, it's a way to pick the next noun, but also it means that nobody has to pay that gas because it comes from the FOMO contract. Okay. Recently, okay. what somebody has been doing is botting FOMO with a bazillion upvotes immediately hmm. to make it so that um, the noun... <laughs> will uh, immediately settle and they don't have to pay the gas. That's what they're doing because the gas was coming from the FOMO contract. We have now broken FOMO's <laughs> ability to settle. So now we're doing what we call janky FOMO. Okay. <laughs> and janky FOMO is we we play, we play watch FOMO. We go to FOMO now, so we watch FOMO happen. And then we just yell at Toady when we want him to settle because if you settle the noun from the settle auction button, then it just settles. Uh, that's what replaces the place bid at the end of the auction. Hmm. Um, then it'll settle and you'll just get whatever noun is there. Uh, and that happens sometimes we get rugged on FOMO because the winner of the auction 
will get it. It's yeah. fine. It's not a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. It's a, it's a, it's a, yeah. So you saw the settle button, right? So that's that's how that works. Is when you settle the auction, that's what happens. FOMO settles it for you, so you don't have to pay the exorbitant gas because it's usually exorbitant these days. Um, and uh, yeah, you uh, that's how you meant the next down. There, settle manually. <laughs> so uh, uh, before continuing, I just want to ask: uh, Are you short on time? Can I? Can no, I'm fine. Okay, cool. So I feel like the settle option is what um you know kills many projects like this one was bid by somebody uh, on jan <clears throat> right. 19 and nobody settled it do you feel that is that to be the case because there's a gas so, fee? on uh, yes and no um here's the thing let's say you have a project auto settle hmm. if the project dies for whatever reason so like new nouns is a is a DAO kinda, um, but it's mostly there as a PFP project for people to like get these randomly generated PFPs and just have them in their wallet. Uh, I've got like two, um, and they're just fun. Like I wasn't expecting anything to come from it. There are so many nounish extensions, um, so yeah, you 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 pick one, right. and 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 a lot of them run into this problem. The way I see it is that settling is actually better. I love the new nouns loading thing. That was um, mm. Defnol X, I think, was one of the devs on that. Um, he's also working yeah. on a nouns OS thing. Great builder, awesome guy. Um, anyway, let's say that it settles automatically, OK? First, the first question you have to ask, where would that ETH come from? Hmm. Right. OK. Uh, uh, and it, the, the first answer, the obvious answer, would be the treasury, treasury right? Treasury, yeah. yeah. So let's say that it settles automatically using Treasury ETH. What if you reach the point where nobody's bidding, hmm. but you have it set to settle automatically? Uh, the way I see it is if somebody wants to bid on a project and the project is currently stalled because nobody has settled it, they can just settle it. Hmm. And then they do the first bid. And if nobody else bids, then you can pick up one of these things for like 0 0.01 ETH. That's that's what twenty bucks. Hmm. So, in, 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 admittedly, you'd probably be paying like twenty in gas too. But whatever. Um, so, but let's say that hypothetically you have it settled automatically from the treasury. A noun doesn't get any bids, but it's set to settle automatically. So that noun, nobody bid on it. It gets sent to the burn address. Or uh, in the case of like Alps DAO, they have something different set up where nouns that uh, don't have any bids go to the warming hut, and then they can that those are then used to give to people as like payment or um, as rewards for community members. So whatever, that's a, a a good use for it. But eventually, you've got it going from the treasury, right? Eventually, you reach the point where you have either you've sent a bazillion nouns to the burn address or you have the bulk of your nouns in a uh, like a, a a separate wallet that you is allocates to people so either way the bulk of the numbers of your you know it looks like you have say 300 nouns but in reality you've got 50 and 250 of them are idle in you know the burn address or wherever else Okay, okay, okay. Um, and eventually, you just run out of ETH in the treasury. As it stands with this settle, hmm. you can, uh, even if the auctions are paused because nobody is settling and nobody is bidding, you still got a treasury and all of the people who have bought into the project can still submit proposals. So even if nobody else joins, the project it still works. Uh, yeah, go ahead, the, go the project ahead. can still do something. So yeah. I prefer the settle mechanic. Um, Curious, uh, what mechanic does uh, lil noun use? Is it is it like the nouns? Is it does it have anything like the FOMO nouns? No, it's it's just a standard settle. Settle. Okay. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. The FOMO is only on nouns DAO, as far as I'm aware. Um, and FOMO is basically works just like settling from the treasury. Only you have a separate wallet that you can add ETH to. So it prevents that issue if the project ever implodes. Um, of course, it announced, you know, the treasury is 
that what 28,000 ETH or something like that. So I'm not worried about it running out anytime soon, but the point stands. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's how that works. All right. So we'll I have, get, I've run uh, yeah. nouns university. I will, I will talk your ear off about any of these things. <laughs> Wow, what is the Nouns University? If you could just uh... Nouns University is a project that uh, I'm I'm probably going to end up folding into TNS, but it started as a proposal on the Combinator round on Prop House, but one prize mm. for 25 ETH. We got some votes, um, but it started out being like me, Andrew Lattisaw, and uh, Defnell X, the one of the devs behind New Nouns, uh, Hey Maya, and Pahas. Yes. Okay. Um, we were going to make a nouns, nouns university. We were going to make a, a, a tutorial for people onboarding into nouns now. We didn't get funding. Everybody else had to go do other things. Can you tell me I the was running the Twitter page. Um, what, what it it doesn't exist right now. Okay, okay, okay. Fine. Um, eventually, it'll be at nounsuniversity.wtf, but I think if you go there right now, it's just like a blank page. Um, I don't I know if I put anything on it. Uh, yeah. it's, it's fairly dead because I'm working on it in my spare time. Um, okay. okay. Uh, but, but yeah, so what I'm working on right now, so if it started as this pre-proposal discussion, um, if you go to the Nouns University Twitter page, there's also a thread in, in, at Nouns University. There's a thread of, about the proposal that we, uh, we wrote when we actually put it on prop house, um, okay. that I did forever ago. It has since transformed from that because everybody else sort of left. I'm just holding on to the name because I own all the stuff behind it. Um, and now I'm turning it into pretty much a YouTube channel um, and a Discord when I have time to work on it. I'm, I don't know when it's going to launch because okay. I'm working on it in my free time. Um, but I'm, I decided that before I go back to the DAO for funding, I'm making an MVP in the scraps of time that I have between <laughs> doing TNS stuff. Um, in order to get funding to like actually make a series of videos as well as making a sort of form. Yeah, there's the problem. Um, so I, I did um, the bulk of this. Um, so, okay. I, I want to quickly ask you, uh, how's, how's your bandwidth? How's your time? Like considering you're working on all of these things and a lot of these are, you know, uh, labor, a labor of love like this one. Uh, yeah. It, you never know when it, it, if the project is going to make it, if you're going to receive funding for it, but you continue to work on it, uh, slowly making strides. What's, what's your bandwidth looking like? And also how is that affecting your mental health? If I may, like, because I, I struggle as well, like when uh, working on multiple projects and having these ideas yeah. as well in different stages. So it's it's kind of it, it's it's just, it's kind of sometimes I stress out just knowing that this project needs to move forward or you know let's having a dream mm -hmm. for a certain project and things like. That. What, what do you feel? What's your? I so I do what I call generic time blocking. Um, you're familiar with time blocking, yeah. Right. You please explain if, if you can. Right. Directly. So the practice of time blocking is basically taking your day and you cut it into blocks. It's exactly what it sounds like. You cut your time into blocks. So, um, and you can, I do it in a generic sense. You can do it more specifically. So everybody knows how to make a schedule. You say, okay, I've got a meeting here and then I'm going to work on this here and then I've got a meeting here and then I'm going to, whatever. Um, I prefer doing a more general version because I'm severely ADHD and I need that freedom in order to not implode where I say, okay, between this hour and this hour, first I fill in all of the stuff I'm doing. So, uh, for, in this case, I blocked out two hours for this conversation, um, because we've got builder box at four and I want to go to that. Um, and, but so we, we, we do, you, you know, you block out, okay, I've got, you, you block out the appointments that you have that involve other people. So in my case, nine o'clock is the big one. Um, and then you block out, you know, time that you're going to use for various things. So I say, okay, between this hour and this hour, I'm going to be working on something for the noun square. So in this case, the last week or so, I've been working on this space camp program. That's also when I, I handle all of our PO apps. Um, I, I make all of them. So that's also like during that time slot, if I need to make another run, cause I do them in like two week chunks, uh, then that's when I do it. Um, so I block out that. Then I block out time for 
personal projects. So you have a very specific amount of time to create these Poe apps? Right. So yeah, the, the Poe app creation is a, sort of a weird thing where, but like I, I do like two weeks worth of nine o'clock shows at a time. Hmm. Okay. Um, and, and I make like every day I, I have a whole thing. If you go to, uh, if you've ever created a Poe app, then you, you know how it works. But, um, I, I, I create them like two weeks in advance and I guess roughly what time they're going to be available for. Since we do secret word drops, um, we only need to make them available for like 10 minutes. So I do a rough estimate and then I adjust it live on the show. Um, and I notate it so that anybody else on the team can access them and adjust them if for whatever reason I can't make it. Uh, but yeah, so I do like a two week block of that, or this is also when I work on stuff. Like, um, if I really want to get somebody on the show, I'll do that. That's when I set aside time to look at the soap boxes and take a look at if anybody has any questions. That's when I prowl the discord. It's, I don't have specifically, I am going to work on this project. I don't say like, I am going to work on space camp during this two hour time block. For instance, I will say I'm going to work on the noun square. What I do specifically up for interpretation, that is up for whatever I feel up to doing at that time. And then I do later on, I do like the, I set aside time for recreation where I'm like this during this time block, I'm going to do recreation. I don't know what I'm going to do. I might play some piano. I might play video games. I might go for a run. Uh, it, it doesn't matter. I'm just, I'm doing something recreationally. Hmm. Um, and then I have once I have a time block set aside for personal projects where it's, and that can be again, anything. It could be, you know, going to the gym. It could be learning how to cook a new meal. It could be, or like bake something. It could be, that is the block that I put uh, Nouns University in. So it depends on how I'm feeling at that moment. And that's basically how I balance, you know, work life when you're in something like nouns and it's a passion as well as your income, it tends to blur that work life line. And that's how I've decided to do that. Um, where I, I can, I can do that where I, I just say, okay, I'm going to be working on something along these lines in this blog. And that sort of gets my brain into that like creative state when I'm in the making time block or into the, you know, sort of business state where I'm in the TNS time block or the hosting state, you know, whatever. And I just block out that time around the things that I have that involve other people. And then that's, sometimes that's work. Sometimes that's, you know, oh, I'm going to go get dinner with my friend at this time. So I'll just move my time blocks around. So mm -hmm. it just means that I'm spending a minimum of however many hours a week on something, but it's not necessarily the same thing, which means I get consistency without monotony. Hmm. Um, I love that uh, you have such a such a rigid system. It sounds like, and also it's, it's something... rigid but flexible. Hmm. I there's a there's a phrase um, that I sort of live my life by, which this applies to. Uh, a few years ago, when I was in college, uh, Joanna Gleason who is, uh, she was the first Baker's wife in the Broadway production of Into the Woods. And she's done, uh, she's on a whole bunch of shows, wonderful singer, actor. She did a masterclass and she taught this phrase and I've lived my life by it since because I love it, which is make plans, not expectations. Hmm. I'll say it again, make plans, not expectations. Now those feel like they're synonyms, right? Like what's the difference between an expectation and a plan? And the thing is, in many ways, they're identical, but there is, uh, you cannot overestimate how much impact verbiage has on cognition. The words that you use impact the way you think. There's evidence of this in like how some uh, people who speak languages that don't have words for right and left, but do have words for, you know, north, south, east, west, et cetera, have better senses of direction because they're used to thinking in that way. Same concept here. Make plans not expectations. If you tell yourself, I expect that I'm going to go to the gym every Tuesday and Thursday of this month. And then for whatever reason, Tuesday morning comes along and you're feeling sick or something, you know, something happened, you're feeling sick, you're feeling depressed, something mm -hmm. comes up and you don't make it. You feel awful. 
Today. And you go, damn, well, I, I, I'm not, I missed a day. Like I didn't meet, live up to my expectations. And it becomes so much harder to go back on Thursday and start your streak back up again, because you expected that you were going to hit that goal and you didn't do it. Hmm. Change the framework. Right. Say, I plan to go to the gym every Tuesday and Thursday this month. Tuesday morning comes, same thing happens. You're, you're, if you're feeling depressed, you're feeling sick, whatever happens, you can't make it to the gym. You break your streak, you go, damn it, that didn't go according to plan. But mm. plans change. Right, right, right. And it's so much easier if you have that mental framework to just switch gears and be like, okay, didn't work, but I can adjust. I can switch and move over to the next thing. That's how I do the time blocking is I plan things, specific things for what I'm going to do during the time block of that day. But if I get to the time block and I'm just not feeling it, I can change my plan hmm. and it's okay. And obviously you run into time sensitive things where it's like, okay, this is due by Friday or whatever. And you really need to just buckle down and do it. But until you get to that point, it's a fantastic way to avoid stress <laughs> because yeah. you can just be like, yeah, I, I planned to do this. Plan didn't work. That's a bummer but I can change plans. It's harder to shift your expectations. Shifting your expectations is a titanic effort of will. Shifting your plans is just turning. That's absolutely a wonderful insight. And I actually <laughs> want to listen to it once more. And I feel like a workshop on it <laughs> will be really valuable as well. Thank you for uh, coming to my TED talk on <laughs> life advice. <laughs> no, I, I think that I need to, I, I need a solution for my, my own life because I don't, I, I have like major bandwidth issues and I don't follow any of it. I just have a to-do list and every day I go with this expectation <laughs> that I'm going to complete. It. <laughs> it's healthy to have some expectations, right? But they should be, you know, like you can expect things of yourself. It really is the same thing. You can say, I plan to do this thing and hold yourself to it like it's an expectation. But when you fail, if you fail, don't beat yourself up about it. You The, the point isn't necessarily the verbiage. The verbiage helps. The point is to go, when you fall, it's okay. You know, and I'm, I'm going to quote Adventure Time here because I'm a nerd. The first step to being good at something is being kind of crappy at it. Okay. And that, that applies to everything. You can literally, like, if you mess up, that means you've, you're learning something, right? Hmm. Right, Which is, right, and, right. and another thing that I'm I'm noted for saying, and my friends who are more realistic hate how chronically optimistic I am. But <laughs> another thing that I'm noted for saying is like, there's very if it doesn't kill me, it's probably going to make a good story about okay. pretty much everything. I I, I was I, I'm from Hawaii. I, I I was home. I was surfing, and I stepped on a sea urchin, and a spike went straight through my fur, th straight through my foot, fully impaled it. And everybody was freaking out and I was laughing and they're, they're like, are you not in pain? I was like, oh no, excruciating. I am in so much pain, hmm. but I'm just thinking about how two months from now, this is going to be healed and I'm going to have a great story about how I stepped on a sea urchin. <laughs> you know, right. great attitude. It's, it's, there's all comedy is, is tragedy plus time. And if you're able to sort of uncouple yourself from time and look at the situation you're in from the future and be like, you know what? It's shitty now, but it's going to be fun to tell people about later. That can so help you get through stuff. Yeah, the upside is great, actually. So just knowing that this upside, you're only going to benefit from it from this pain. <laughs> so it's, yeah, you feel, yeah, there's an incentive to actually enjoying that. Uh, I just want to ask how much time you have. Uh, for, 40 minutes. Uh, also, minutes. sorry if there's background music, background noise. Somebody is using a freaking that. Somebody's using a leaf blower outside my window. Okay, okay. No problem. Um, I'm going to be muting and unmuting periodically so you don't have to deal <laughs> with that. Okay. No problem. No problem. So, like, uh, I wanted to get into, like, the noun sill, but I think we'll get into the poaps because that's important. Let's, that's let's get to the poaps. Let's get to the meat yeah. and potatoes. <laughs> yes, We've yes. only been on this call for an hour and 20. Let's... <laughs> Absolutely. Now we can begin. Absolutely. And I will, I will, by the way, I will take full responsibility for that. I am particularly verbose. It's why I host a radio show for a living. I'm totally enjoying this. Uh, by the way, I have sent you a link to a poap, uh, to something I'm working on for Nouns Hack Week. Uh, so it includes a poap uh, that I've just sent on this chat. And I would love 
for it to be in your collection. Uh, now, I am going. I am sharing the screen. So the plan is. See, uh, I think just I'm gonna quickly scroll and show the magnitude of <laughs> of what we're gonna talk about here. Uh, if so you look the, at the if you look at the Po app in the the le the column on the left, you can see the number of Po apps that I've collected. It's three hundred fifty no, or something. No, no, no. That's that's the that's the number of the noun that was back. Yeah, that down there. If you scroll down, Po app is a category. Okay. 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 And you can see it's it's. Uh, it's 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 pretty hefty. Uh, it's I'm sitting at 364. 364. That's right. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it is a big one. Now, I just collected the one that you sent me. Amazing, thank you. So yeah, this is it's crazy. Uh, so uh, this this one just happened, is it? Okay. So I'm just gonna refresh this and uh, what see. Uh, how this conversation began is um, to, this is uh, announced Hack Week that is going on right now, uh, which is a, a, a week of various props on the prop house on the uh, uh, prop house on uh, by the by nouns and the nouns ecosystem. One of them by noun square. This video I, I, I want to submit on the noun square uh, prop uh, for the Hack Week, uh, and like one of my thinking around this was to actually create. Um, I have an idea around Po apps uh, that I'm going to work on. And tomorrow is an important day. I'm going to work on that tomorrow. But so far, past few days, I have been like brainstorming and preparing uh, different uh, elements to this. Uh, this Po app that you just collected is one of them. Uh, and part of this is this little research that I'm doing about what are some of the I see. Uh, my like claim is one of the most iconic uh, Po apps in the announced ecosystem. Uh, and I, I was looking out uh, and checking on um, on uh, with various people, uh, and uh, a friend from Lil, the Lil Nouns community pointed me to Noun Square, and in the Noun Square, I was immediately uh, uh, I led right into RobertFishGirl.it's uh, wallet, and we began a conversation over there where you shared with me uh, your wallet and uh, and uh, a, a few different uh, stories there and i reached out to you if we can do a live stream and just go over some of these uh, it doesn't need to be iconic or any of that i think every po app there's something special about it uh, it's at the end of the day it's art somebody has worked on it and with which is amazing at the very least on top of that some of them are like really meaningful like this one is the inaugural twitter space of the noun square can you believe it so this the fact that uh, you own it uh, you have it uh, uh, minted on, on the blockchain and it is in your collection shows that you were part of this iconic event many would call of the very first twitter space which i if i wanted could never own i could never it is not even possible. You technically there's, there's possible. only like seven of them <laughs> anywhere. I think if you click on it, it should tell you how many there are. I think so. So you, you it cannot even be shared. Like if if you want, if nobody is gonna send it to me, <laughs> so it is that valuable. Even though twenty one total of that one. Yeah. So so it is. Perhaps are really special, and uh, you hold like really some some like. A lot of these apps. So let's go to that. I'm gonna slowly scroll, and I want you to stop me and tell me like about this event, about this moment, anything that comes to your mind. I think we'll start with this. Uh, Patricio uh, is the founder of Patricio. Uh, yeah. Of uh, it was, so Poa. this was actually cool, and we'll we'll reach one in a bit. But Patricio actually helped me make my first app, which is kind of a cool thing to be able to say. Um, but during NFT NYC, we were having we were doing nine o'clock at uh, Margaritaville in Times Square. Um, Prof was there. It was me, Prof, Patricio, Gami showed up eventually. Uh, that was where I met Optoshi and Shefo. Um, yeah, there was uh, there was just a dream team. We're gonna do it again this year. Actually, uh, we're having a noun square event at NFT NYC. I'll be wearing a hoodie that says the noun square and giant lettering in the back. So if you, <laughs> I'm I'll be the only girl wearing the oversized hoodie. And blue hair. So if you can't find me, something wrong has happened. Anyway, okay. Um, <laughs> so yeah, but Patricio, my my PO app did not go through because you need about forty eight hours when you submit a PO app for it to happen. Mm. Uh, maybe or like seventy two hours usually. Get them, get them as early as you can. Um, right. Which one is and, that? Your PO app. Uh, this one. If you, if yep, that's the one. June of twenty twenty two. So it's it's. 
the the whale head i put the trans flag in oh yeah another useful thing today's trans day of visibility and i'm doing a show where i talk about my trans flag po app incredible so there's, see there's a lot that lined up um do you, but, you have yeah. a yeah Go ahead. So, so this was the, so I I actually took that picture. I, I lived down the street from Central Park, so I took the picture in the background and I made I threw this together. Uh, but it wasn't working uh, because it hadn't gone through the approval process yet. And I was sitting across a table from Patricio, and I was like, "Yeah, I don't. I, I wanted to give out a po app, but it hasn't been approved yet." And he was just like, "Give me your phone." And so I had to and he literally takes my phone, looks at the info, like the confirmation email, takes his own phone, like texts somebody, and then two seconds later hands me back my phone and they're like, it's been approved. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So I got, I got my first PO app that I handed out <laughs> manually approved by the owner of the company. Oh my cool. God. That is he's crazy. So, he's so cool. He walks around with like his bright red suit. And he's got he's got his phone that he uses for like calling people, and then he's got his pimping phone that he exclusively uses to bid on nouns auctions. It's hilarious. <laughs> that is a great story. That is a great story. Like the I, I remember somebody telling me about how they got Instagram verified. They met uh, somebody working at Instagram at a conference, and they <laughs> this an influence. She was an influencer, but but she just got herself verified through that person who was just sitting there, like who she was just talking to, and they're like, yeah, I'll do that. And you know, she did it on the phone apparently, like right then. So this is really cool that you got it approved from Patricio. <laughs> it's pretty uh, right cool, there. right? Yeah, yeah. Cool. So let's move up. Just a quick one. Like uh, it appears that my camera has died, uh, but no problem. All the all the better because you're looking at my little noun here uh, on, on the screen. <laughs> all right. Excellent. So we, we go uh, we go ahead and do stop. Okay, the noun square inaugural Twitter space. Okay, before that, before that, just a quick note because we mentioned uh, Petruccio. I did not know that Petruccio is a noun whale. Nouns whale. You told me on he, this card. He has. He used to bid more than he does now. He hasn't bid in a minute. And but and his his nouns are delegated uh, mm. to. Now 12 at the moment, I think. Uh, they used to be delegated to Tody Hawk, actually. He gave up his delegation because the pressure was too much. And now uh, now 12 holds on to them and he does a wonderful job. Um, really, really thoughtful voter. Um, but yeah, yeah, he's like, I think he's like the third biggest block of votes. <laughs> I see. Just like, like his block of nouns. He doesn't vote. He delegates them. But um, it's, yeah, he's he's wonderful guy. Got I it, love Patricio. Patricio has come up in my uh, in my uh, YouTube a few times actually uh, for people who have followed because I, there are other stories as well who have met uh, Patricio at conferences and he has given them poaps during the earliest ETH India conferences. He has given them yep. like an embroidered poap and all that. So it has come up a few times. So it's really cool. So it would be amazing for me to connect with him, but it has ha hasn't happened yet. All right. So wonderful man. Inaugural Twitter space. Please tell me about that. Mm -hmm. So it was we <laughs> we had no idea what this would become. The inaugural Twitter space was uh, super low key. Uh, it was a brand new Twitter account. This is at at noun underscore underscore o underscore clock was the old Twitter handle. If you go there, it's still we still have it. It's still a placeholder. Um, okay. But uh, that was before we moved over to. We, we switched that account to at the noun square, and then we got the at noun underscore O underscore clock and held on to that so that uh, nobody can use it to like fool anybody. Uh, but yeah, this was the very first Twitter space that the noun squared did um, for noun 341. That was 291 days ago. Uh, and it was super simple. We, we got on the space, a bunch of people got on stage. I actually got on from the, the blocks account as a metaverse thing. You can see the first PO app that I, the second PO app in my collection actually is uh, when we interviewed prof for blocks. Hmm. So okay. Okay. that's the, that's, that's the company I was working at. So I actually was on this first uh, inaugural Twitter space as blocks. Um, and then, uh, and like on that Twitter, I wasn't even on my own Twitter account, but I, I got it on my wallet. The pop up on my wallet. So, amazing. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, see, we, we, you, you are referring to different po apps as you tell uh, your stories. So, that they're you... all connected. <laughs> it's all connected, man. <laughs> <laughs> Chong. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, some of, these, some of these early ones are really cool. Like, there's uh, a message. So, I'm, I'm just going to. And there's from meeting me. 
I'm just going to bring up uh, this, this one. Crisco created. This one is uh, genetics is a contributed bankless DAO, and I remember uh, that yeah, she was part of. Uh, okay, okay. So you met her, and this is that poor app. Yeah, I was hanging out. We went. It was me, Prof, Jen, uh, the Rat Pack, Sundapoop, and Metamonk. A um, couple other people were. Uh, we did nine o'clock at a at a bar. Yeah, uh, just oh. off Times Square. Um, Bob Toshi was there too, uh, but she was hosting the show, so she was outside. Um, but yeah, that's when that's when I met Jen. Interesting. Um, and you, like you her want... and Prof were hosting Poapathon like from their hotel room. It was pretty great. Hmm. I think I'm, I'm I'm hoping to see her again uh, this year because I'm I'm going to be in New York in two weeks. I I'm, I used to live there hmm. during the first time of GMOC. Uh, I don't anymore. I moved a few months ago, but I'm going to be back. I'm excited. <laughs> Anybody listening? You asked me to look at another poap. Which one was that? Oh yeah, so the, this one that you have your mouse over right now—that's uh, that's Prof Werder at uh, NFT NYC. She always uses the flamingo as like her main identifier. And then mm -hmm. if you go down one row into the left, you'll see uh, Chris Co-Create. Don't bother clicking on them; it's you're gonna <laughs> we'll be here for ages. Yeah. Um, that's for noun profiles. He actually did the nounga as his uh, as his uh, Po app, and. Yeah. Uh, I also own the Nounga NFT that uh, he did a uh, combination with the song a day guy. Um, they, okay. uh, they, and they, they, they made a Nounga song, which is cool. Okay. <laughs> okay, cool. We are going above. Please do stop me whenever you uh, want me to. So yeah, all, so most of these are going to be for nine o'clock and these early po-ops were made by nodes. I miss him so much. Simple. Um, uh, I think these are for simple. the nine o'clock uh, Twitter spaces. Correct. Okay. It's even it's got our old logo too before we did our, our branding redesign. Oh, um, oh, oh, okay. So this is the first the first po ops that we started being made by other people. Hmm. Uh so I think these might have been by Sam. I forget who did these. I forget whose art that is. So it says watching the end of the auction of noun three three seventy-four and helping mint. So uh noun three seventy-five. I saw this. So what does this mean? Helping mint. So are you all do you all get on a okay, okay. Is it on a Twitter space? It means playing FOMO. It because so the the what we do, the the layout of noun o'clock shows, and this hasn't really changed much. Uh we start the show usually about ten to five to ten minutes before the auction ends. We watch the end of the auction. And then we go to play FOMO nouns where everybody on stage and everybody in the audience goes to it, nowadays nomo.wtf, which I'll get into later. Uh, but uh, and we we get the um, we we play FOMO nouns where we upvote and downvote the noun. Once we get enough upvotes, that noun is minted. So we help choose the following nouns. And since FOMO nouns started, we got we we've gotten much more aesthetic nouns. Hmm. Yeah. So yeah, and then you can see I love the fact that we have so these were all by uh, Greta Grumplin. Oh aka from Carlos the bold, 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 uh, from the, the crab onward. Um uh, and this is when we started doing like different artists coming in and doing like guest po apps. The bold ones NFT is Greta. Yeah, that that's Greta. Yes. yes. Um uh, I've also got one of my favorite uh, pieces in my collection is from Greta. Oh, these were cool. So these QR codes. <laughs> um, these po apps were by Super Tight Woody, and for this run of five po apps, he actually wrote a song oh. every single day, and the QR code is for that song. So if you scan the QR code of these po apps, it'll take you to a SoundCloud page where you've got these songs. The bomb is fantastic. The Shrimpy Burger got animated in 3D by Arash. Like these are so sick. <laughs> So those are some of my favorites. Is the first musical poaps. He literally did a song every single, like full. Song, they're like three minutes long. The bonsai one is like a meditation track that's like seven minutes long, to like for with like controlled breathing and stuff. It's awesome. Um, the shrimpy noun uh, with the rainbow hat uh, noggles was also um, about uh, that was that was when we did a, an event in uh, for GI toads. So, um, uh, sorry, yeah, I was yeah. on mute. Uh, it was it actually a med meditation track? What you just said, or I thought it was like a figure of speech. <laughs> it, it was like seven minutes long, like uh, like droning music for you to okay. like listen to and like calm your mind. It wasn't yeah. like meditation, meditation, but you know, 
Same difference. <laughs> got it. Got it. So it I'm wasn't gonna... guided meditation. It was music that would, it was, that it was help you. Audio, yeah. audio that would help you meditate. Makes sense. Now I'm just going to go uh, scroll above. How about these? This is from a new family of Zero Aprilia. Uh, she's fantastic. Uh, she, does, she, she's, she came in through Nars Dow. Oh okay. boy. <laughs> here, here we're at the noun anniversary. So okay. uh, oh, there's the noun song. Is, is this the um, noun anniversary, uh, the main poem? So, so there's 24 of them. Okay. If you okay. scroll up, you'll see a whole bunch of numbers. <laughs> oh, right, right, uh, right. We so the now for the noun anniversary on August eighth on eight eight twenty two, nouns had been around for one year. It was the noun anniversary, and so at TNS, we did a twenty four hour long Twitter space, where we started at the end of the auction, and then we kept going for twenty four hours until the end of the next auction, and we had a norm. So actually, it was twenty five hours because we had a normal noun o'clock space at the end. Okay. And over that 24 hour period, every hour or so, <clears throat> we gave away a POAP. So there are 24 of these. I think I am one of two people that has every single one. Wow. Because <laughs> I was up for that entire 24 hour period, um, co hosting for half of it. <laughs> and then uh, the final art was an open edition. That we uh, we minted on Zora, I think. So um, this was a, a poem for each hour of the Twitter space, for each hour of the twenty-four hour space, and it was rough. Wow. I mean, some were like, were like an hour and a half. This apart. is some so like meaningful. This is so meaningful. So, and you actually were up for the entire twenty-four I, hours. I, was up for the, I didn't <laughs> nap. I wasn't like Naptoshi. That's when that started. Um, I was up for the entire twenty-four hours. I was on stage for about 20 of those hours, hosting and interviewing. Uh, and this was before I was even an official team member. So this is, this is I think, the thing that kicked me over the, the edge where everybody was like, okay, we got to bring her on. <laughs> <laughs> She's devoted. We got to do it. Um, I'm, what was the conversation think, in, the in the 24 hours to the space? What, what were you all, you all discussing? So we, we uh, a whole bunch of things. We basically used the 24-hour space to highlight... Uh, a whole bunch of people. We the original plan was to have um, like twenty four guests essentially do like one hour each, and so we sent out a sign up sheet for anybody who wanted to be part of the twenty four hour space, where and where we basically were like, okay, so here's here's an Excel sheet. Um, put in when you want to do uh, your interview, and so many people signed up that we ended up doing like 48 half hour interviews. <laughs> well, I th there was uh, not, not quite uh -huh. that many. I think there was like 42 oh, yeah, yeah. guests over that yeah. 24 hour period where we, we, they came on, we, they told us about their project, about some cool thing they were doing. And we were like, all right, next. And we just <laughs> <laughs> threw them off the stage and brought the next person up. And we did that for 24 so, so, hours. So you're telling me that despite the 24 hour period, you did not have enough time for everybody. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> okay. What okay. from the signups on that? The people that we had to kick off, we we had like three weeks worth of guests. It was ridiculous. <laughs> Crazy. Oh, Crazy. here's G. So um that that paper uh style. This one. Is yeah. It this one? So G is an artist that hangs out in the noun square. We do um we do uh poaps or we, we do competitions, art competitions, like several times a week at the noun square because we love highlighting artists and we've got ETH and we're determined to not hold on to it apparently. So we, uh, we, we do these art contests and G was one of our very early, uh, entrants. So is uh, Xerox Prilia actually, that's how we get most of our POAP artists is they've entered contests and either whether they win or not, we're still like, Oh, that's really cool art. You know, can you do a run of POAPs for us right now? We've got scheduled out for like the next eight months or something. Um, and so we, so G, uh, came on and, and won an art contest and it was so cool that she ended up made, it was like a do, do this noun in your style. And she has this beautiful, like paper craft style of digital art. And we were like, you should make a collection of this. And then she did. She has now been in museums. She oh, has wow. been, we, we featured her in, uh, she has her own gallery in, uh, like on cyber and voxels 
Um, she's incredible. She's this incredible artist. And this, this poop was from uh, when her collection uh, began its mint. So is it a, it's an NFT collection, not a poop. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So this is the poop to honor the start of the NFT collection. Wow. Um, but she started as just a contest entrant, didn't really know much about nouns. And then we were like, oh my God, your art is incredible. We'd love to have more of it. Um, so yeah. And I think she, she's done a run of, she's done at least one run of poops uh, later on. But this was the first poop for her collection, unrelated to TNS, but she joined nouns, nouns because of the noun square. Okay. Okay. Got it. Uh, super interesting. Um, I'm just going to scroll. Absolutely above. incredible artist. Yeah. Yeah. And what a story. What a story. Uh, that, well, there's that you have a poor app uh, to mark the beginnings of someone who is now in a gallery and uh, has a collection and everything. I know, yeah. right? I love this. Um, oh, watercolor nouns. This is uh, Prof Werder's kid. Uh, hmm. He does, he makes watercolor paintings. And I've actually got one in the mail coming to me pretty soon of uh, my PFP that he did, which is cool. Super. Um, I'm just, I'm, 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 I'm going to ask something. I, I'll, I'm taking a screenshot. I want to know if you hear it or not, because I've been muting whenever I do that. If you don't hear it, I'll <laughs> just take it. Did you hear that? No. Okay. That means I don't need to mute myself. All right. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna go uh, scroll. Little sisters above. by Alistair Dora. Um, oh, system DMs. Uh, that's a whole collection now. Hybrid nouns. If you go to hybridnouns.wtf, you can mint those. Okay. Um, he actually makes physical version of those. Uh, he carves them out of wood, and uh, and it makes it so that you can actually like turn these giant physical things and see two nouns at once. <clears throat> so again, that started as a poe app he did for us, and now is its own collection. <laughs> nice yeah so little sisters can you talk about little sisters a little bit i've heard them on on uh, tns uh don't know anything about the project i think it's so little sisters a, isn't yeah. around anymore but it used to be or kind of is it's they were funded by little nouns and they were a subset of little nouns devoted to um uplifting uh marginalized genders in the nouns nounish nouns ecosystem um, and in the Web3 ecosystem. So women and non-binary creators, artists, whatever. Um, mm. We're coming up on G's line of poaps. Uh, this is 3D nouns, I think, by Coral Orca uh, generated these. Um, anyway, so yeah, that's what Little Sisters was. I've actually got an interview that I did with them that's similar to these lines. Um, and they had a weekly soapbox on the noun square while they were funded, um, as well as funding rounds. They actually funded me to do uh, RFG read-alongs um, where I did a month of, I read every single noun style prompt. Oh, just read them, just read them out loud. Okay. Um, no, no frills or anything like that. Literally just read the nouns props and posted the recordings on, uh, Spotify and every other major, okay. like uh, Apple music, whatever, every major podcasting platform so that anybody who wanted to read nounish proposals but didn't have time to sit down at their computer and read they can like go to the gym and put their ear ear pod their airpods in and, yeah. and listen to the nounish proposals and... done it's so basically i was doing text to speech but i did it in such a way one i read it in like the npr voice where i was just like mm -hmm. and uh this next proposal okay is by the noun square um it this this voice sounds even better when you said it over dissonant flute. And okay. <laughs> so, so I did them all in that voice, uh, sort of like ASMR and, um, and also like would describe the images and stuff like that. So no opinions, just the proposal, but in a, to a degree and with a level of expressiveness which, that you can't get from text. Which is the uh, poem that uh, represents uh, that reminded you of that? That, you asked about Little Sisters. They're the ones who funded yes, yes. me to do okay. that. Oh, interesting. So uh, that work uh, is actually quite valuable. It is It is not easy to be going through proposals <laughs> so, to be reading. Yeah, and I, was, uh, I picked a rough month to do it too. Um, but I, I actually ended up starting late. And I did it for both nouns and little nouns for that month. I think if I do it again, it'll just be for nouns. Um, mm. And I do it as a subset of TNS. But I might, I might pick it up again just for nouns. Because doing it for both was 
rough on my vocal folds. But <laughs> okay, okay. I, I think I'm it is gonna... valuable, though. Uh, Dev Carrot really, really liked it. I know he he was a big listener. He's one of the yeah. nounders. Interesting. So Bankless DAO has a. First of all, I want to tell you that uh, if if you're coming in on on the hour on the time, uh, do tell me. Don't worry. Will, about uh, yeah. So Bankless DAO has a YouTube uh, series where they create like this really nice, well produced videos. Like Liquidity at Alan Bryce does that of the weekly roll up newsletter. So the roll up newsletter is awesome and uh liquidiate uh aka alan bryce is uh does these videos like summarizing them so it's like really useful uh yeah so yeah proposals all the more better because they are uh harder to digest <laughs> all right I'm, i'll just keep scrolling yeah so oh, this is g's run that i mentioned earlier uh the paper craft mm. i love her art please <laughs> love it world of down pops scare me um, oh, that was the the Noggles Genesis Po app. I got those for having Noggles, um, but, the physical Noggles. If you scroll down a little bit, uh, Big Shot gave those out. Um, I got those from the physical Noggles. Oh, I have a okay. set. I have a pair of the the toy Noggles, the plastic ones. Hmm. Uh, so that's what I got those from. So Noggles yep. is a project that uh, there, gives out the there's, physical there's, Noggles. There's a bunch of different types. So these are physical. I have a physical pair of plastic giant noggles that I can like physically wear on my real face. Okay, okay, okay. Got um, it, I can it. send you a, a, an image later. I've, I've, I've got one from NFT NYC last year uh, before I owned them, but this is from that. Um, there's also like nouns. Yeah, those. I have those. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I got it. So this poem uh, represents that. All right. Um, mm -hmm. uh, just going above. Yeah, and more just, more of the noun square po apps ad infinitum because I do uh, have I all of not, them. I think my volume is just give me a second. Oh no, I sorry, I was I was muttering. To hear you, I don't know what is. Can you hear me on. now? Um, uh, what uh, about now? Yes, yes, I do hear it now. All right, fantastic. <laughs> yes. Um, the international po app that got screwed up for some reason that was funny <laughs> okay this is the d this is the uh profile picture on uh dom from dot nouns so that's how i remember this. <laughs> yeah dot nouns used it uh used something like that but um that that was for international that's a uh, mama zark's project i helped found it but i'm not super involved with it these days oh okay okay how did you help found it by the way um, I speak a lot of languages. Uh, mm. so when she was sitting at the discord, it's a really cool project. She has this discord where, um, you can type in one language and it gets auto translated into like 20 other ones. Oh, um, okay. so you can have seamless conversations in whatever your native language is with whoever. And because I speak, you know, English and French and Italian and German and, and you know, I can meet Tarzan, Eugene, my way through about a dozen others. Um, mm. I, I I was able to verify that the translations were at least good enough, hmm. um, as well as helped with like the Discord setup and everything like that, and helped onboard people like, um, like give people verbal instructions in Japanese when they didn't necessarily you know know how to get on Discord without that. Got it. Got it. Um, I, I think my laptop is a misbe like <laughs> a, a little bit, which is uh, we'll 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 close out shortly because we're we're to, approaching two hours. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just going to refresh this page and maybe we'll uh, scroll a little faster. I I don't know why. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> Uh, but I think this has been great so far, and I really appreciate that you came on. And I, it's, uh, hey, good luck yeah. editing this. <laughs> I, I, I'm not going to be editing this. <laughs> oh, okay. You're just going to post the full. Yeah, yeah. All right. Because um, uh, it was supposed to be a live stream. So uh, yeah, and uh, I have, yeah. All right. All right. I'm so, sorry for being so talkative, everyone. Um, <laughs> there's, uh, yeah. That's oh, I love this art. That's that's Elistadora. Um I, I I tagged you in the Discord about that, but the um her art is, always just makes me happy. Little stars too. All of the art that we've got had for our pro apps <laughs> is fantastic. So yeah, just you just keep scrolling. Yeah. Um 
Uh, this one is it Adam uh, Adam Bomb Squad Bomb Squad. That's that's yeah. Lil Star. I don't I don't know um, if there's any particular significance for yeah. it. Graphicography's <laughs> animated nouns. I love those. He still makes these. He started doing them for Poaps, and he just now he just makes them for fun. Posts them like every day. <laughs> Got it. Uh, yeah, a couple yeah. Nouncil meeting poaps that I got. Nouncil meeting poaps. All right. Yeah, we when we do uh, when we when we have Nouncil meetings, we give away a poap every single time we have a Nouncil meeting. So I can't attend as often as I would like, but <laughs> uh, I think I just okay. Yeah, yeah. Mo most of these are going to be from from Noun o'clock or from Nouncil. Uh, or little sisters. I was there a lot. Food nouns. Um, let's see. Oh, the the original Alp style po app. That was that was from when Alp style launched. Okay, so the uh, Alp. Okay, can you tell me what that's Alp uh, that's Body's project? Uh, Alp style is um, they they're renting a or doing like a sponsorship package with this uh, resort in Hokkaido. Uh, hmm. I think it's in Hokkaido. It's in it's in Japan. Um, to to basically just go skiing, like that's that's what it is. Uh, it's sort of a Nar Nars Dao extension in a way. Got it. Got it. Uh... So yeah, most of these are going to be from TNS. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> wait, wait, go to... <laughs> <laughs> on the left when they noun Africa. That was yeah. for the first ever welcome Africa space for, for okay. now, now Africa. Uh, and then they've got the little the little guide to like basic Swahili phrases. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so so there is a they, they, they put it on a donkey because the first nouns now Africa prop was to buy a donkey. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> There's a there's a nounish donkey. The, the question the, is, did they buy the donkey then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They did. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I forget what it was for. It was for like racing or something. But yeah, they they got a donkey. <laughs> Crazy, amazing, amazing. Yeah. This one. So this was for a moon boots. A Kevin Rose episode, is it? Oh uh, yeah, I think so. Okay. Nice. Or uh, maybe just like community members, but that was for Little Noun Show. Mm -hmm. They always do cool po, po apps for that show. I try to show up whenever I can. Recent member of the community, amazing to be part of. Yeah. How, how about these? Uh, this is from the Noun. Oh, that's from uh, Dariush. Darius, he, uh, he 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 generates those with um, like Mid Journey and a few other things, like just super fine tuning. Um, yeah, Dariush is uh, also known as the Nounish Billboard. He's been walking about three thousand miles uh, across several countries. Um, actually, I haven't what? heard from him in a minute. I hope he's doing okay. But yeah, he's uh, he's doing um, uh, this. Uh, I've got a few uh, NFTs from from him that uh, talk about that project. But yeah, he's he's wrapping nouns across like Turkey and uh, a few other countries that he's just like walking across the Middle East, basically. What? Yeah, he's, he's 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 like going on foot and on bus, uh, just backpacking at full send, and he he made these po apps using AI. Amazing. Okay. It's so I I love everything that that man does. He's he's a wonderful human being, and I'm I'm so thankful that he exists. Huh. Zero X Dariush on Twitter. Uh, if you're not following him, you should be. He's fantastic. Definitely gonna look him up uh, and follow him. Oh, 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 oh! So these, these that you're looking at right now, the like, starting with the igloo, these are done by my best friend, Suka Squiggles. He's also my Pride Nouns co-founder, so we're we're working on that. Um, Pride Nouns is a, a nounish, not that one, um, the next one. Okay. The the sort of anime manga style, uh, scrolling up. Those are from Pumi, uh, who's a, another this fantastic. One, this one. Yeah, that starting at the igloo. Okay, okay, okay. So these are all from uh, Suika. He's been my best friend since middle school. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, and 
is he's a fantastic artist. He's doing all the pixel art for uh, Pride Nouns, which is a uh, nounish extension I'm I'm working on uh, again whenever I can um, to raise money for LGBTQIA plus uh, builders and causes. Um, I'm literally learning how to dev to make this project, and he's doing all the art and the front end uh, web dev for it. So. Good. I have so to. You... I have to highlight him because his his <laughs> art makes me so happy. Wow. Um, and the circle is how it shows up on the Poap app. If you look okay. through the Poap app and you look at yeah, the yeah, Poap, yeah. And then yeah. outside, but he extended beyond the circle because he knew it would. I told him it would show up in like the rainbow wallet. If you scroll up a little bit, um, on the left, yeah, see the rose in the the suit. <laughs> that was right. the day of the rose parade. Uh, and we minted a rose for uh, on the noun square in order to get ready for the rose parade. And it, it had a white body. And so he put it in the same suit that the judges for the rose parade used when we had a float in uh, the rose parade. Wow. When we did the noun mm -hmm. float. And then the day of the parade, because uh, I think that was, yeah, that was the day before. No, that was the, the final day of the year. 31st of December was this one. If you look... Like two poaps later was the actual day of the parade, and he put the rose, the second rose noun we minted, on the float, and you can actually see like there's noun o'clock, there's his name, and then hmm. behind him you can see the giant noun that we had on the float itself, and it had an axe accessory, so he had it playing a guitar axe. That was actually a reference to a D and D character of mine that he then okay. <laughs> incorporated into official nouns art. So, I, I sorry, I just. His art makes me so happy, and the fact that I got to bring my best friend into this ecosystem makes me so happy. So every time I have a chance to shout out his his work, I will always do it. He also uh, the the icon that I'm using on this call, that little chibi me, hmm. he did that too. Okay, okay, wonderful, wonderful. I will never stop yelling about him. So, um, <laughs> we'll have Please to do. we have to cut that off now because I will uh, sing his shout his praises from that mountain cup. I, I, lo I love that man so much. <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah, these are all going to be little sisters. I think that last little sisters was the the last little sister space ever. Actually, this one. Sorry, which, no, no, no. Which, that, that's little nouns. Um, this. yeah, that one. Oh my I God. think that oh. might have been the last one. Oh no, that was for nouns on the ground. That okay, was that was when Optoshi came on. Okay. So there's but, there there there's a there's a there's a poap for the final little sister space, um. But it yeah. it's, it'd be we, we keep scrolling up. We'll 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 find it eventually. Because I got I got the first one and I got the last one and most of the ones in between. Okay. These are all Alp style poaps. Um. Oh, there's the little noun show when we did the. <laughs> that's the parade again, because that was they had um. The, the stupid buddy guys on. Can you can you tell me about this like uh, what what is this some good work happening in other parts of the world? No, they don't the so there <laughs> it started with Davin, I think, doing a cleanup. Um when we did at TNS we did a cleanup competition and Davin did this whole video. And uh, Food Nouns, we've also funded stuff for um, nounish communities in Africa. Food Nouns, we gave, like, we fed an entire village for, like, a week. Um, we just gave away yeah. food there um, with, with, like, this massive pot of rice that was bought over there with, like, one ETH. Um, less than that, actually. Wow. Uh, okay. So that was okay. a cool Food Nouns prop. So that I, this is a highlight of one of the um, cleanup events that happened over there with uh, Nouns in Africa. And I have a lot of personal connection to them as well because that I'm I have dual citizenship. I'm actually both a citizen of the United States, where I live, and uh, Democratic Republic of Congo, where I've done hmm. a lot of work. Okay, so, I see. That's that's actually where I learned to speak French. So maintenant, quand je parle français, je n'ai pas français avec un accent africain parce que j'étais du français là. So that sounded very nice. Uh, uh, I, no, I speak French with an African accent, okay. um, and it trips people up because I'm I'm dark, but I'm not that dark. <laughs> so. Okay. All right. Uh, going on. I don't know why there's two Valentine's Day nouns from 
the poaps from prof. That's it's a bug in the poap system. But apparently, yeah. I minted the same poap twice somehow. I don't know how that happened. Yeah, it, it, I think you're not. It's not possible to mint two from the same collection, is what I know. Yeah, so I don't know why that's showing up as I minted it twice, but. So uh, we've got, oh, um, and then and that this is the end of the collection. So the reason you're seeing these, we actually have, that you can see yours there on the right. Nice. Um, so the reason you see these generic noun square poaps, I actually made the mm. art that you see there, or that little animation of the eyes going back and forth. Mm. Um, we have a special arrangement with poap. Uh, okay. It's the only reason we can do this, where I make the poaps and I upload this art, and then the artists that we have, all of the noun o'clock poaps, the art on them hmm. is the noun that was minted that day. Now, of course, we make the POAPs in advance or we wouldn't be able to give them away on the show. Hmm. So I upload all of them with this placeholder GIF of Nauni okay. and our logo. And then we send the POAP team later. Oh we send God. them the art from the artists like several weeks at a time. And then they just update them. So some of these POAPs, this is the first time I'm seeing the art because I haven't gone back and looked in the old so, ones yet. So you you work directly with the POAP. Uh, we work team. directly with the POAP that's, that's team. That's what I was wondering. How, do, they, because uh, I've gotten so good at making POAP runs that I make them so fast that I've, <laughs> my IP frequently gets banned. <laughs> and I, they need to go in and unban me because they it looks like I'm botting the system. I'm not. I'm just very efficient. But... <laughs> so... so uh... I was wondering, like, how uh, how do you administer like a change of art on the Poab app? So you have uh, special privileges. We have special privileges. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We have reached to the end of the collection, and I can't believe this has happened. Like, how amazing that we went through your whole Poab collection, and I got to learn so <laughs> we much. We lost about over it. most of it, but yeah, most <laughs> of them are going to be from the Noun Square, as well as from the, from the various soapbox shows that we have. That's the 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 bulk of the Poabs. I mean, I've got 291 just from the noun square because we've <laughs> but, been doing this but every single day, and I haven't of, missed one. Each of these uh, poems from the noun square looks like is uh, representing the community and the ecosystem in some way, and that is like amazing. Yep. So, so every single one of these, if you look at what the so like you'll see this one at the bottom middle right there where it says uh, the noun square noun th 630 631. Hmm. That was yeah. from a nounder day because again the, the nouns ending in zero are all nounder nouns. So okay. on nounder days we get two nouns in the same po app, and uh, <laughs> sometimes it's two different pieces of art that it just blinks back and forth, or sometimes it's something like this where you've got both nouns talking to each other, and you can go and look up on nouns.wtf if you go to noun six thirty you'll see that tree or that house. I think it's the tree. I see, amazing, amazing. So. Uh, I, 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 I obviously like this has been really wonderful. I just want to quickly explain this for app. So uh, may, may I do that? Mm -hmm. uh, so this is actually right now, um, this is Nouns Hack Week uh, going on. And I am I still don't have an idea, but I am going to be working on something. I think there's only like two and a half days left. Uh, and the idea has developed in my mind a lot. And today's conversation has been amazing, obviously. So this, so I want, like, poaps are so meaningful. Clearly, clearly, they are so meaningful. And uh, this week, uh, Nouns Hack Week, uh, there's a lot, lot of, no, like, nouners. Uh, who are dropping uh, props. So this is what uh, it represents. And also, like, what I am going to do, like, we don't, I, I don't have the camera on, but, um, sorry, my camera is dead, but I'll just turn on my laptop uh, camera uh, for a second. Um, so I've printed out, like, these poet cards uh, on, like, uh, uh, yeah, just these cards. And um, I, I want to I wanna be, like, I want to, through through my um, now hack week proposal, I want to proliferate nouns and the idea of poaps uh, through giving out these physical cards and having mint, uh, having people mint seventy five poap links that I have now, and I I want to deliver it as a video, with like a, I have something uh, grand uh, that is planned at the end. I literally have. Uh, 
two more days or two and a half days to pull that off i i don't know how, how that is going to go but the <laughs> thing is the thing is the idea is still not like in my mind like I, i'm like thinking because this is a po app yes but how, why why would why should anybody be minting it is the question like i had a few ideas around that which is why i've been asking in the community like is there, like, i'm just trying to come up with the right idea idea I, i was thinking maybe i'll inform somebody about nouns and then give make them mint it or inform somebody about po apps and then make them mint it like it has there has to be some reason for other people to mint it but that doesn't seem that interesting so i'm would yet you to like ideas get there. definitely so definitely i just minted this po app and i mentioned it because we are having this conversation so now i have a po app in my wallet that says we had this conversation and right. if you'll notice the po apps that i highlighted i highlighted for two reasons one they're the ones that i really like for the art g illustradora april um suika uh then there are the ones that marked significant events you know um the the for the first ever nine o'clock show uh the first ever or the the the, the patricio po app that i have the first uh, little sisters show um the little nouns shows that you highlighted like the ones for that with the moonbirds yes. um it's all in the name po app <laughs> and i give this feel every single morning po app stands for proof of attendance protocol The point of a pro of a po app is it is a snapshot in time. It is something that lets you say I was here. I was at this thing. I accomplished my my presence was felt at this event. And I think that's what you have to build it around. If you want people to mint this, it, there's no reason to just make a po app for the sake of making a po app. I've got one coming up for people who see me IRL at uh, NFT NYC. I've I make the daily noun square po apps. Those are only available for, to mint for like 10 minutes. If that, usually less. And the only reason we have them that long is because I tend to pick words that are kind of hard to spell. Um and because they have to play that god awful game that po app has inflicted on us. But it's the the thing that you have to do. And obviously we've been talking for 2 hours. You don't need to do this. <laughs> But If you want there to be a reason for people to mint this, make an event. Po apps are meant to signify time and presence, proof of attendance. Attendance happens when you are in a specific place or engaging in a specific activity at a specific time. Po apps are the bookmarks of your life that you can go back and go, "Yeah, I did this thing." Hmm. Make something it has to happen live. and it has to happen in a limited time frame uh where people are going oh yeah this is this is i'm i'm getting this poaps don't have value on their own poaps are given their value by the event that they commemorate um mm. and honestly you know the poaps are minted on on a, on on a on a on a layer 2 they're they're not you you basically can't trade you can trade them but it's difficult and and there's no reason to like they don't have any fiscal value poaps are a, are entirely valued emotionally so you have to give people a reason to care emotionally i'm glad that i have this poap because this was a really good conversation and it shows that we had this conversation and when we had it but it doesn't you know and it, and and so now when i see that i'll go like oh yeah this is when i did that interview right. give people a reason like that go go around and be like hey uh why are you interested in nouns and get on this thing talk to somebody for 10 minutes figure out why they like nouns what they like about it what they think they could improve about it and then give them a po app for showing up right right that that's just was... one idea off the top of my head that you could do that is amazing but i want to that is amazing like that audio bite is amazing i want to follow up with like a clarification on on, on the idea to expand on what if this is offered to somebody who does not know about nouns and about po apps like what would you think is but i but to develop like a moment event that they would remember how is would you have any thoughts on how to develop something like that um how to explain to them why they would want to po app 
why they would why why they should mint this poap and why would this <clears throat> one uh, like mean anything to them like if if they're not interested in poaps from the start that's going to be difficult um hmm. but what you can say i find that if you're talking to somebody who's not interested um or doesn't know about it chances are it's because they don't know that much about this ecosystem in general and in that case it's super easy to compare it to the real world you can use po apps like business cards you can use po apps like uh have you ever been to a convention they give you like a lanyard that has the badge right if you I, go to a I, lot of conventions and you start collecting those lanyards right that's what a po app is it's it's a souvenir it's saying yeah i was here for this thing so you can in part of the conversation that you have you should say hey we've got this platform it's called POAP, Proof of Attendance Protocol. Long, boring name, so we just call it POAP. Mm -hmm. And it, it lets you uh, look back at the places you've been and the things you've done. And it lets you show, you know, hey, I did this thing. And people can even leverage that. We've got, there's some of the POAPs that I have in here, especially the ones that uh, Prof gives out because she loves doing that. If you go to POAP.fun, you can yeah. make cool stuff that is POAP token gated. So you can even say like, hey, you know, Thank you so much for having this conversation with me. Uh, I've got a PO app for you. It is a free NFT that you can mint. Uh, you don't even have to say that. You can just be like, I've got this PO app for you. It's digital souvenir. Um, and this will mean that uh, you can remember me and I will be able to go back and see who I gave these out to. And it'll, it, it's, it'll be valuable for me to see who I gave these to. And uh, it might make it so that I can contact you or uh, get you on the allow list for stuff that I do in future. So POPs actually have some semblance of utility. You can use them mm -hmm. to, it's it's not just for the individual collecting them. It's also for the people giving them out. To be able to say, uh, you know, like at, at TNS, we try to do things, we're working on systems that reward people who collect POPs in a streak. Uh, because again, they're, they're NFTs. You can, co you can token gate things behind them. So we're trying, we're, we're, we're experimenting with systems where we can like, for instance, if somebody collects all the PO apps for a week, then they get access to a special channel. That's what we do with Nomo now, but stuff like that you can do. Um, or you can say like, hey, you know, thank you for your time. Thank you for, I've got a PO app for you. If you collect this, then um, next time I do something like this, or if, if I, you know, future projects or anything, then uh, you will automatically be added to the whitelist, stuff like that. God. That's only really valuable if they're a DGen, but y you get what I mean, right? Like, I do. there's POAPs are tokens, which means that you can apply whatever value you would apply to any other free token to them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, RFG, uh, this has been absolutely amazing. Thank you so <laughs> much. And this is not just one Thank hour, you for but having two me. full hours. It's like two, two hours, full hours of me <laughs> talking your ears off. I hope you're happy. <laughs> I, I, I am i am and i think you have i think the way it ended uh, also is I, I really like that you really described what poap means and everything so yes i'm gonna be uploading it as it is uh it is it's supposed to be a live stream only issue is that uh there was an issue with the youtube connect uh but i'm gonna be uploading as it is uh, but i hope um anyone who has made it till here obviously <laughs> how, how awesome uh, you are uh, but I think even in the first hour, we had some amazing conversation. And I think this uh, this tour of the of POAS itself uh, is going to be a great memory um, for uh, as, as for a reference uh, about uh, about the nouns ecosystem. And I'm excited for anybody uh, to uh, for what I'm going to be working on uh, the next couple of days. And hopefully I'll have something to show that will reference this as well. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, shall we close it then? Uh, I'll let you get back to your day and uh, have a great time. Yeah, come to come to the Noun Square at the Noun Square on Twitter and uh, join us for Now O'clock and a whole bunch of other shows. We've got right at this moment uh, is the tail end of Builder Box, so go check that out. Go check that out, everybody. Uh, and uh, anybody watching this, thank you for joining. Uh, RFG, I uh, uh, will keep in touch. Have a good one, friend. <laughs> you too. Yeah, I'm closing the stream now. See ya. <laughs>